Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to your Liberty Radio. Uh, we are broadcasting live from the Piney Woods of East Texas once again on a Friday night. Uh, but this Friday night's going to be, well, kind of different from what we normally do. Uh, no uh, hour of music this evening because... We have a very special guest in the studio tonight who uh, we will introduce in just one second. Of course, uh, most of you already know that I am the Drizzle. I am uh, very happy that you are receiving this transmission and that you are traveling on the Underground Railroad of COVID land with us on this Friday, February 9th, 2024. With us tonight, is none other than the creator and the host of the Rained Out Rantcast, which you can catch every Sunday night on rainedoutrantcast.com at 7 p.m. Central, I believe it is. He's also the co-host of AM Wake Up Monday through, well, it's Monday through Friday, but uh, Chris is there with Steve. Monday through Thursday every week, pretty much. And let's see. Let me get your mic on. Your mic is on, uh, hopefully on my end. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. It, I think we're, we're good. Yeah, you're a little low, but I can boost you on my end. Am I good now? A little bit better. I'll just throw a little gain yeah, on top yeah. of it. What about now? This might be a little bit better. Yeah, that's that's much better for my eyes and my ears as well. How you doing, Chris? Sweet. Welcome to Liberty Radio. Pretty good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's a fine Friday night here. And you're in Arkansas, right? Yeah, Northwest Arkansas. I'm in uh, Walmart land. Okay. Well, you're not too, yep. too terribly far from me. I'm in uh, East Texas about, I don't know, 20 minutes from the Louisiana border. Uh, yeah, I think that is a little bit of a drive. Uh, uh, I did it a couple of years ago. It only took me like better part of a day, I think. Yeah. I haven't been driving for a while. I, I hurt my shoulder back in October, or, uh, July. And... Uh, haven't been driving since. So how did you do that? What what did what happened? I had an accident at work. I dumped my truck over, and uh, yeah, that's a short to a long story. <laughs> All right. It tore something in my rotary in my shoulder here. Did it require surgery? I, yeah, I gotta go get surgery. Uh, next month. It's oh, been wow. this long, drawn-out process. It's ridiculous. Lawyers are ridiculous. You know, they get paid regardless. Yeah. <laughs> they're well, out. yeah, they're they're hourly, so it doesn't matter really what the outcome is. It's it's more that they just spend a lot of time doing not a whole lot, but collecting a paycheck. Well, in a work situation, they get paid a percentage, so uh, they get a uh, most places like ten to twelve percent. That's not bad. I would take it's that. Not bad, but uh, they get the you know. I should have had this surgery shit done a while ago. It's just people dragging their feet, and then I have to call and sound like an asshole, I guess. But now they're. Fucking sending me overnight and me stuff and shit's getting done now, I guess. Hmm. So somebody's money must be on the line then. That would be my guess. I don't know. I just want it, like to be able to use my clutch hand to go riding. Uh yeah, that's I can't ride and then uh, driving sucks hmm. right now. No, I can imagine. And driving's like my thing. That's what I do for work, you know? So it's caused quite a big, a bit, bit of a problem in my life the last five months. So how have you been, uh, 
have you been navigating that obstacle? Uh, I just, uh, I'm on the show on AM wake up every day and, uh, I, there's nothing I can really do. You know, I, uh, it's, uh, they cut me off my money there clear back in October. So I've been completely, uh, broke. It's just living off what anybody sends in on my cash app. Wow. Which, uh, it's been, uh, eh, I've gotten through it, I guess. And then uh, I'm sure it's tax time now with the new thing, with the $600 thing, which they just kicked in. It's going to cause some problems. Well, if you, you file taxes. That in now. Well, using that that's the thing with the digit with creator with creators uh you know when it comes to getting donations or anything like that through like cash app paypal i tell people not to use paypal at all paypal is already holding 24 percent if you don't give them an ein or some sort of uh, tax number uh eins and employee identification number right um they automatically are taking 25% of anything that comes in. So, uh, and then cash app, you know, cause they had talked about doing the $600 thing, you know, yeah. it was $10,000 before it triggered. Then they said $600 and everybody went, Whoa. And then it, right. it's $6,000 is what it bumped down to. It's, and then, I think this year it triggers the 600. It's sitting there right. wherever it can. It, it, yeah. I thought they had tricked everybody into believing that the 600 was off the table, but it was still in play. Yep. Yeah. And I, I believe. Yeah. Cause la it, what was it? J January? Maybe it was December when the notification came up on PayPal saying we're keeping 24%. If you don't give us an EIN and that's not like 25, 24% of, uh, because people think it's like a $600 lump sum. They change it completely. I think it's like anything after the $600. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if $600 come in, it doesn't matter. Combine. Correct. They're, I think it's, yeah, I think so, it's through I mean, payment platform is probably the way yeah. they're going to look at it. Not like you're getting, you know, $50 from this person and you're, you're getting seven fifty from this other person over here. And yeah. That's the person that you got to report on. No, it's going to be total. Like if you get six hundred dollars through PayPal, it's gonna yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna get triggered. Fuck. Yeah. it's gonna be like confusing as shit. You know, uh, same with the Cash App thing. I mean, everything that comes in, no, they're not six hundred dollars here. You know, but anything at six hundred or more automatically triggers, and then the combination of what yeah. comes in. Once it hits six hundred dollars, triggers anything after that. It's not, yeah, it's not like a single thing triggers. It's a combination. And if you got something that came in at six hundred dollars, it's already triggered that, I believe. Probably. Well, it again, it, they've been watching all this stuff for years, right? It's this yeah. is nothing new. They've been they've been trying to keep track of people and how they get them their money and spend their money forever, essentially. But what they're doing now is they're basically enshrining it in legislation to allow them to basically act like mob enforcers and go around and just start, you know, uh, getting protection money from everybody. Yeah. And on the digital side, that the digital side, it just they it makes it real easy for them. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and then it it. uh basically trains everybody for the cvdc uh which like whitney webb said was uh commercial banking credit digital commercial banking digital credit they changed it now that it's not central banking digital currency because that's scary right <laughs> it's, so commercial banking digital. right the focus groups apparently got their reports done yeah they said, oh, my God, on Twitter, they're like, this shit's nuts. We're not doing it. So let's change it to commercial banking. And it's just the little banks who don't have to charge interest to certain groups. Right. <laughs> I, well, the way, the way that I understood that it was 
supposed to unfold in the United States, and it still kind of looks like it's on course for that happening, is that the essentially the the Fed will have control over <clears throat> the infrastructure, but they will designate the allocation of tokens or whatever the hell it's going to be to you know, whatever banks it is that they handpick to serve as like their creditors or whatever, you know, so like your JP Morgan's, your Bank of America, Wells Fargo, so on and so forth. Yeah, it's, it's all the same thing. It's just, they're doing it. Like, I don't know. Well, I think what they're doing is they're actually creating an additional layer that they'll be able to profit from. Right. Because it's completely <laughs> unnecessary. The, because, yeah, because we were like, because the majority is like, fuck this shit. So they're like, okay, we'll do it this way and this way, which then profits. It's kind of like the border uh, bill thing, you know? Yeah. How the border bill, they try, try to squeeze in this money for wars. You know, one group says, nah, and then you can blame this group. But then on the other side, they're like, well, here's just a fucking package with just money for wars you know and then the other group that was ready for the border thing was like nah we want more money we want other wars funded on this and then they go okay and then you don't get the border stuff but you get the war stuff and everybody's arguing over it it's just this constant distraction shit yeah it doesn't i mean no matter what the the cbdc thing yeah they're gonna do as much as they can to profit off it as much as they can and then it's like uh, almost like them trying to be like, well, we hear what you're saying and here's how we fix it, you know. But ultimately that that just helps them further, you know. Well, yeah, because, again, the and solution that they're the proposing is place, something yeah. they wanted to do anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's some sort of, uh, yeah, the PSYOP la- wedding cake. I think it's <laughs> yeah. like analogy, like Sam Tripoli talks about being in a fun house, you know, but it's like these layers upon layers upon layers upon layers. It's a psyop wedding cake full of shit. Mm-hmm. I think that's what we came up with on AM wake up. First we thought it would be empty, but then it's full of actual shit. Yeah. Well, they have to do <laughs> something with the waste, right? Just like the fluoride. It's got to go somewhere. Yeah, they just bake it into the cake, you know. Yeah, yeah, make you believe you need it, make you believe you want it, and then yeah. you shovel it in by the spoonful. Even when you hit the shit layer, people still just shovel it in because it's got a little frosting in there. So, well, I mean, we have had over a hundred years of oppression education system in America now, so the you know the the bar has been constantly lowered in that time period to where we got to the point now where uh, tall people like me can literally just step over it, you know, and keep going. Yeah, that is interesting, the the educational thing. Because they did that study where, what was it, one in five young adults don't believe the Holocaust happened or was a myth. Right. And it's like, I don't know if you've seen these man on the street things when they ask young adults questions about history, but they don't know shit. No, they don't seem to. Yeah. What are you, who are you at? What kids are you asking about the Holocaust? And they say it's a myth. You know, is it you asking them what the Holocaust is and they think it's like a fucking, you know, Starbucks in Cuba or something? I don't know. You know, and then you're like, oh, they think it's a myth. And we'll just write it down as they think it's a myth. Well, I mean, yeah, because the way that they're they're using language now, uh, especially in things like news media, right? Everything is so malleable at this point that nothing really has any real substance or meaning anymore. So just the what we're expected to consume on a content basis from the mainstream perspective is just complete and utter nonsense, you know? And yeah. we know from studies that have been done by behaviorists, by psychologists, like people are not going to exist in that state forever. 
they're eventually going to figure it out and they're going to break out of it, right? Or they're going to try at the very least. You would think. But it kind of doesn't yeah. seem like that's happening, does it? Um, no, I mean, like... Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know where this is really going, you know? I mean... Someone made the, and this is probably Pat, PBR, I call him Pat, Pat uh, <laughs> David. Is it Pat, Pat David? Is it Pat Patrick David? Pat? Pat, Pat? I don't know. Is Patrick it PDR, Bet PDR? David. I have to Patrick say his whole Bet first David. name, otherwise it doesn't okay, come out Patrick. right. Yeah. Yeah, and he was pointing PBR out. PBR is good, though. I like that. That's recognizable. Said, uh, um, what was it? Like 90% own everything, and then like there's one percent trying to stop the four percent that know are woke oh to yeah, it yeah, yeah waking up and it's like nah that kind of makes sense i mean because that's what it seems <laughs> kind of seems like well, that's what and it feels like pbr <laughs> pbr is the one that's pointing this out you know he's the one who's like getting bill maher to go oh yeah I, I agree with what you're saying about the poor people you know it's like what the fuck is going on here honestly that's all you have to do to bill maher just like get on a on a topic that he has like no knowledge of which is you know most topics honestly and he'll just yeah. he'll just nod and and agree with you and to admit that on his show i don't watch the news i don't pay attention like what the fuck i thought you're fucking show was about current events and topics like what are you talking about you're literally sinclair media then yeah but he, he doesn't do any of his own writing he has a team of writers that do everything for him so he doesn't have to keep up with things he can literally just like chill at his house in his basement playing yeah, video dude. games or whatever the fuck <laughs> it is that he does i don't know how awesome of a job to have a show and you have a team you just fucking run in and they're like here's the here's some papers yeah but yeah. he's always been friendly to the machine throughout his entire yep. career like the he what he has right now is what he spent his entire career chasing because i remember when he yep. was just another stand-up comic back in the 1980s and nobody knew who the hell he was yeah and uh pat patrick bet there he pointed that out you know about that yeah it's just crazy uh the way the media is and the legacy media and the mainstream media and the alternative media like the mainstream media is collapsing and then they're gaslighting everybody into believing like they're still relevant and shit you know like you look at the tucker carlson thing with the that thing's pretty funny. There's one part where Tucker's like, "Ha oh, ha ha!" His Tucker laugh, oh, and it nice. cuts to it cuts to Putin, <laughs> and he's just fucking stone faced, you know. And he keeps, <laughs> but yeah, that thing's got like 200 million views on it. Tucker and and Putin and shit. And, I, and all I don't even yesterday. believe that. I don't believe it. it I know that many people because actually they can, watched it. They can manipulate numbers like a motherfucker. They got, yeah. I've pointed this out multiple times. Twitter runs on three different platforms, PC, Android, which a lot of all the uh, apps do, right? But they're centralized, basically. They might be on Android, Apple, PC, but they're centralized, what it seems centralized with their algorithms and their data because all the data's match. Twitter is not synchronized so it's three separate platforms three separate like pay tier. there's already tiers on each platform but it's three separate huh. um on pc it starts at like three dollars on android it starts at four <laughs> on apple it's like five it's so you can manipulate the numbers like Elon can literally manipulate advertisers and whatever he wants with these separate three different platforms being separate like that. Oh yeah. 
you know i mean they can already manipulate the numbers but then having it have three different algorithms simultaneously giving different numbers and being able to shadow like you can literally be shadow banned on the apple side and not fully shadow banned on the android side it's that's what twitter is the the everything app facebook just shadow bans you yeah, just right. across the board. Like, it doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter. It's just one thing. You know, all the numbers all are the same. Twitter is this like crazy mess, but I mean, most of the fucking news is that's where most things break. And then you got to go find the. I love the people who break news with no source. And then you got to go find <laughs> their goddamn news. I fucking hate those guys. Well, those are the ones yeah. always getting promoted by the algorithm, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. it's that you'll click on it and then yeah. it'll be like, while you're here, buy my soap. Right. It's like I don't give a shit about your soap. Right. And then you find out, hey, the news is actually kind of real, but not really the exactly what they said. <laughs> and their soap sucks. So how did yeah. you get involved in media? Like, how did you become a part of this space? I have no idea. I just uh, ranted into my phone on Facebook. Uh, I did it a couple times before the whole quote thing. That's where I came up with the rained out rant cast thing because, like I said, I drove a truck. So when it rained, I was at home and I didn't do anything. And I would just rant into these videos and then COVID hit, and I would rant into live Facebook groups. I basically tinfoil hat, let me into their group where I didn't have to be approved to post anything. So I could just hit live and my posts would go in there live and I would get their people watching me. And then, yeah, I pissed Facebook off. I call myself okay. El COVID. <laughs> I went ahead and started a podcast. <laughs> I pissed them off and then I beat them at their own game. I that was fun. But uh yeah, then I started a podcast. And I did that. It's been coming up on four years now that I've had the show. And uh my my last episode was the first episode I've ever had taken down by Spotify. Yeah, I saw that. So the the book <laughs> that this guy wrote is it fiction or nonfiction? It's fiction. It's literally. Uh, I would almost say it's written almost like a kid's horror story, but I mean, I wouldn't say it's for kids. Although I, I mean, like a te you know, teens could read it. It's they it should. It would be in like a fucking middle school, high school scholastic thing. I would think, but yeah, it's nonfiction. But the it's like a uh, Dan Brownish, Micah Dank type book. And what what's the title of the book? Kabbalah of the Crocodile by F. Gardner. It's uh, I don't read. I have a bunch of books up here. I don't sit here and read them. I read that whole book. It's only like a hundred and fifty or sixty pages. But there's some knowledge in there that uh, when you read it, it just kind of all clicks together. Because, <laughs> you know, I've been deep into symbolism and etymologies and stuff. Some of the religious stuff, I've never dove hardcore deep, deep, deep into um, Orthodox religions, you know. But with the knowledge I have in the symbolism and the esoteric stuff, now going deep into ortho the orthodox stuff, it's like, oh, shit. Uh, this shit's crazy. <laughs> and then they ban my... Uh, my I've, I've talked about everything. I, I tweeted out a list of my... Uh, some of my um, titles to my shows, like Biden Died, because it's FTX Tether Broke. <laughs> You know, I mean, just putting Biden die in the same title is probably not good. You know, Jerry Jones would own slaves if he could. You know, I've talked Flat Earth. I've talked uh, 
I don't know. I've, I've talked about everything there is. I mean, from the get go, I was right all over the COVID the and the, the bullshit with that. Um, and, you know, Spotify got Rogan on there. And when they got Rogan mm -hmm. on there, everybody, there was a big fit thrown. So then they would just put the little blue thing at the bottom of the episode that would just say, warning, <laughs> this might be about COVID or something. And that was it. There was they never touched a single thing of mine, and then this time gone. So, gone. what do you think it was that that got the episode flagged? The Jews. I was talking about the Jews. Uh, but hadn't you talked about them before? Um, not in the deep Kabbalah sense, and getting into like the transfer agreement and you know world war ii um i also showed the video of the holocaust love story which i mean everybody knows about the holocaust rosenblatt and you know his wife lying about the apple thing. whoops about the apple thing uh but then at the end of that video i added there's a documentary where i think it might be in poland i'm still trying to find the full length of this documentary but there's a man named Yosef who's getting the records of his family and himself from wherever he's at. I, I believe it's Poland. It's either German or Pol Germany or Poland. And uh, the lady pulls out the records. This is back in probably the late 70s, early 80s. And Yosef is dead. <laughs> his whole family is dead. They all died in Auschwitz. And Yosef's standing there like, what do you mean? I'm alive. I'm right here. She's like, no, nah, I got a mark. Yes, dead. You're dead. <laughs> I mean, just in that little clip, there's five people listed as dead in the Holocaust that are living. And mm -hmm. this whole room is stacked with the uh, index card, you know. Right. Punch cards. Files. Yeah. So, like, there was that shown and and uh, yeah, talking about the, I showed uh, that <laughs> cars for kids, one, eight, seven, seven is actually based off uh, kinder lock. The kid, uh, the kid uh, lock, I think, I can't remember what lock is, but uh, it's literally the kids uh, singing and invoking the coming Moshak, right? I, it, which, Moshiach, if people don't know, I mean, they want Moshiach to come, and Moshiach's their Messiah, right? And he's uh, mm. coming, and when he comes, it's not going to be great for everybody. I mean, I don't believe in the shit. You don't have to believe in it, but it, just the fact that they believe in it, and there's certain steps that have to be done in order for him to come, they believe. Well, that shit's it, crazy. Yeah, doesn't that uh, kind of follow like the whole um, the Jewish Messiah is actually the Christian Antichrist storyline? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. and then you look in and Christianity. You know, someone was like, "Well, Christianity is older than Jude Judaism." And then when you look at it, I mean, Christianity is Judaism, right? I mean, at, it is at one. It's a they followed Jesus, who was what Jewish, right? I mean, like mm -hmm. it's it's a it's Judaism that then split at a point, right? The Gentiles went off and they followed Christ, and then you know it went it, and then it starts separating all over the place. That's where right. it gets real crazy because there's so many different sects and like uh, different like when you find out about the, like the Don me and the Sabbateans and Sabato is it Sabato Zevi, I believe, you know, these guys who openly became Islam, you know, Islamic mm -hmm. outwardly converted to Islam, but secretly were practice still practicing Talmudic and, and, and the Torah like in, and endogamy right so keeping it in the blood and in the fa in the religion you know keeping it 
like uh, pure blooded is basically what I believe is going on there. I mean, when you look at the story of Adam and Eve, Adam and Lilith came from the dirt, right? Mm -hmm. So they weren't the same. Uh, Lilith is in the Jewish, right, religion and and mythos or whatever. But when you think about it and you think about these royalties and these bloodlines and these ones that keep it in the blood and and you look at, well, shit, Lilith ran, runs off with Satan because Adam's an oppressor and God makes another woman from Adam's flesh, whether it be rib or DNA or whatever. So they're automatically, they're, they're, they're the same. And then you look at the, I mean, that's what we're seeing in the royal families. We're seeing in these orthodox uh, religions and dogamy of keeping it in that those lines. And it's like, oh, shit. Well, if you know the full story of the of Genesis in the garden, it's like, oh, it makes sense. I mean, they're trying to fucking keep a bloodline alive. And it even says in somewhere in the Bible, I can't remember where about you know, eternal life's within the blood. I mean, mm. and then they do shit where, <laughs> you know, the adrenochrome stuff and um, the adrenochrome stuff, whether you believe it or not. I mean, back in 2020 when the Q, you know, everybody's locked inside, so everybody got deep into the Q stuff and, you know, adrenochrome and they're eating the kids and stuff and then they go, no, we're not. And then Newsweek's like, oh, young blood is at the fountain of youth. Uh, Right. Silicon Valley willing to bet millions. And then in the show, Silicon Valley, he's literally taking blood from a young person. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, <clears throat> I mean, gaslighting everyone. I mean, there's a fucking company called Ambrosia that fucking does yeah. it, you know. There's actually a Which billionaire right now who is, what is he, he's getting blood infusions from like his son or his grandson or something? Something like that. And yeah. now... If you see Chrissy Teigen, Chrissy Teigen selling it to where you basically pay to have, I don't know if you're paying to have the doctor pull the stem cells from the placenta right there from the umbilical cord and then shipping it off so it's saved. Mm -hmm. So now we're entering a world, we already know how stem cells work. And if you have your own if you were to have your own um, infant, you know, stem cells, because that's a, this the thing with these stem cells. When you're getting somebody else stem cells, these some stem cells are already grown, right? So their use is pretty limited. If you get right. the umbilical stem cells, and they're your own stem cells, right? And those are the the cells that can grow this, into like anything, right? anything they can they can heal anything they can so now it's moving into the position of like i don't know how much this costs but i'm assuming it's not like a cheap thing to have done uh because it's being stored so there's probably some fee on that or some shit plus you're sending it to a lab to sit there <laughs> but when you think about it and i've said this before that like our generation maybe our kids generation it will be the last to like uh, go through like a physical type death, you know, hmm. because they're going to have their own stem cells to be able to cure themselves. Uh, once they wipe the earth clean of whatever they're doing, because when it comes down to it, these people are psychos and I'm not talking yeah. about just like Orthodox. Uh, when you get into the Zionism and oh, oh, the, some of them are certifiable psychopaths, man, like clinically. Psychos. Yeah. I just watched the video of uh, Sir, what's his fucking name, Sergey or whatever from Argentina. Not the one where he's crying up against the wall, but he's standing there and he's saying, you know, if the second uh, temple or the second uh, prop, if I seen the prophecy with my own eyes, then hopefully the pro he's talking about bringing in the third temple. He's like that prophecy I will see within my lifetime and it's like what the fuck are you guys like and there's like this huge um you know everybody hates the catholics and the christians right 
like oh those pedophile yeah they're fucking pedophiles 100 mm-hmm. <laughs> percent. but you can publicly fucking hate them right not them as people but what like these disgusting like rituals and these things the that they that they get away with but you can't bring the same shit up about the other group hmm. case in point my fucking thing just got banned i have a hundred and something hour hundreds of hours of me saying crazy shit crazy crazy stuff but that episode was just too hot i guess uh, especially when you're bringing up like the transfer agreement and it's like, wait a minute. I mean, Netanyahu was st- saying, you know, just a couple months ago, Hitler didn't want to kill the Jews. He wanted to, he wanted to move them. And then yeah. you find out about the transfer agreement, which th- that stuff's omitted from school. Well, yeah, you know that stuff is omitted from your history. That stuff is omitted from your schooling. That stuff. So, and then you dig, you know, you start digging into like the transfer group. Well, who got transferred? Was it just regular old Jays or was it the the old Hasidics that got transferred out and got sent over, you know, to be safe? 30 plus million dollars spent to 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 move them out a pack between the Templar and, and the German Jews and Hitler and like it's a it's something that is is completely omitted, mm-hmm. and 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 yeah. Well, not only so that, honest, but yeah. like you know, I I guarantee you I was not taught in U.S. history class in the eleventh grade. Uh, shout out, Mister Glossner, you were you were still a hell of a uh, history teacher, but he didn't teach us about either the Bolsheviks or the Nazis being funded by Wall Street. Right. That that was not a part of the curriculum. Nope. No. Like, and, you know, it's like, well, they have to cram all this history. And that's one excuse is like, how are they supposed to cover like everything? And it's like these. These are pertinent things that are right. like not covered uh, like and purposely. Yeah. Because then it change it changes everything. It's well, yeah, because they're they're very important details of events that affected, you know, a large population of the people on the planet. You know, yeah, and, and so what, when you're uh, removing that kind of context from things, it allows you to reshape the image of those events into pretty much whatever you want it to be. Yeah, and that's what. Uh... I guess when you watch the Putin Tucker uh, thing, Putin, it's funny because at the very beginning, he's like, let me take 30 seconds to one minute just to lay out the history. And then 45 minutes later, he's <laughs> still laying down the history. Because <laughs> that's basically what he did. He laid out the entire history and everything that's been going on to lay out in context. But it's boring and everybody fell asleep by the end of that part. <laughs> you know Damn, uh, but I might have to need go to, watch it now people need to understand yeah he literally was like just give me 30 seconds one minute to tell you the history and it's it's like 35 40 minutes later he's still telling the history and Tucker keeps interrupting him and he's saying I you know I wondered if this was going to be uh, you know entertainment or actual journalism I can stop if you want you know, I can, you know, and Tucker's like, oh, no, 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 keep going. And then, and then he's KGB, right? Right. I mean, Putin was KGB, and then he's calling out Tucker for trying to join the CIA. And I love today how everybody's like, what? Tucker tried to join the CIA. It's like, yeah, he tried. Get the fuck out of here. But he his did, dad, right? well, Again, that's the clever sleight of hand that they do, right? Because, yeah, the whole thing is, oh, Tucker tried to join the CIA. Tucker's dad was fucking CIA, like through and through, ran the broadcast board of governors, ran board, uh, Voice of America, the CIA's Dude, propaganda I... arm in Europe. Come on, people. 
and then it blew me away. I was I was looking a little bit into Tucker the other night, you know, because I've never really looked in that deep. I knew the CIA. I watched like the Tulsi thing. He literally says, we, you know, we had CIA in and out of the house. They were they were all over the neighborhood. They were like, you know, part of the family. And then I'm looking into yeah, Tucker and that his dad is part of the family. <laughs> yes. And then looking a little bit more into him. Dude, he was writing for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette mm. here in Little Rock. Like, it's like, wait, what? During uh, Clinton's time, Hunter's down there writing opinion pieces, pol political opinion pieces down there. And it's like, that's interesting. You know, I mean, he was all over the place. And you get the same, the sort of story of like Hunter, or Hunter, I say Hunter, but Tucker, uh, didn't graduate from high or uh, college, I don't think either. Uh, he ended up like getting in a fight with someone or some shit, and then went off on his own. That's when he tried to join the CIA, and supposedly the CIA was like, "Nah." And he's like, oh, "Okay, I'm gonna go be a journalist." Wink, right? <laughs> you know, and then off to become a journalist. He went. You know, if we dig in deeper, he probably hung out in Langley for a little bit. Oh yeah, I think it was for more than just a little bit. I'm I'm collecting all the you know my dad was in the CIA you know I tried out for the CIA uh, like all those clips of all these people you know I was a CIA intern you know it put all those together and run yeah. them out like the the thing with uh, Bud Light you know Shane uh, Gillis is going to be on Saturday Night Live tomorrow he just signed a deal with uh, Bud Light. Bud Light uh, lost their ass when they put Dylan M Mulvaney supposedly on its own Bud Light can, I right. guess. Just one can. It wasn't a bunch of cans, right? That's the argument. It was just one can. Anyways, they lose their ass. Uh, you know, you got people like boycotting Kid Rocks, shooting the fuck out of cans of Bud Light, and it's like, man where i'm from you drink the booze first then you shoot the fucking cans right, right? you I, never I, waste alcohol <laughs> fucking bastard uh you know you had that whole thing and you have like even like ufc fighters were would say you know are voicing their opinion on this on the situation because before even this bud light was a sponsor in the ufc they had mm -hmm. stopped spot you know their sponsorship and then boom UFC signs a deal with uh, Bud Light. The Bud Light CEOs at, what, uh, three fights ago was at the fight when Trump was there. Kid Rock talks to the CEO. Turns out CEO is CIA. And he tells it to the CIA Tucker. And Tucker goes, yeah. Yep. And it's, it's in the clip. Kid Rock says, was CIA, and it's like, this is blood in, blood out, gang. This ain't like a fucking, like, uh, you're hanging, you know our shit, and then you get to go do your thing and get to talk shit about us. Right. It's a blood in, blood out, gang. Yeah, there's only one way gang, you leave gang, the company. Gang, 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 shit. Yeah. yeah. In a body bag. Dead. It's fucking plain and simple, man. <laughs> like... And like, there's like, granted that they, they, you can say that speculation, that that's how it works. Like they, oh look, they retired or this and that. And it's like, no man, they like, there's no way they let them in there. It's the motherfucking CIA. Yeah. You know, you get to hang out, you get to know other secrets, and then they let you go about your way. So you can start a fucking, you know, your own Twitter show and talk shit about them. <laughs> granted some of them are allowed no. to talk shit but they're allowed to talk shit and they're allowed to talk shit to hear disclose this much to them because Correct. they're not going to do shit about it right well and that's the other yeah. thing too is <clears throat> all these times that the tucker's you know saying these things right this is all soft disclosure this is also yeah. like if any you know he's caught with his hand in the cookie jar at any point down the road he can always point back and be like well i told you guys were, weren't you listening? Yep. And it causes like this. I don't know. 
I seen this post about someone posted about uh, Tucker and his stance on 9-11. It's like, how can you trust him on 9-11? Look what he says now compared to then. And it's like, yeah, that was then, dude. And he changed his mind on it now, right? If you wanted to put that type of argument out. It's just this weird... Uh, I don't know. David Icke's calling them the mammies, right? Mm -hmm. The mainstream alternative uh, media. Which is funny um, because now David Icke is being called into question, like right after he said that. Well, yeah. He put it Again, I guess, you know, because it's not like, I guess David Icke's never been actually like verified to be 100% truthful all the time, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've never really gotten into the whole reptiles running around with body bag suits on uh is it possible i guess i mean you know you see those videos of their eyeballs acting oh weird. yeah oh that shit's I just seen the one at trump where they're like really focused on trump's eye and the one eye just keeps like acting weird it's like nah, maybe i don't know but yeah i mean the mammy thing i noticed with like it's it's like they're setting stuff up uh, 100%. I always come back to the Pogo thing with David uh, Goldfield, I believe. It's some old recording that supposedly came from 2019. Is it real? I have no clue. Well, uh, flesh flesh that out for our audience a little bit because I don't know that Goldberg. everyone who's Goldberg. watching and listening right now knows what Project Pogo is. Uh, supposedly this man got a hold of these documents, you know, from the White House. David Goldberg got these documents. They come directly off the white, right off the desk of the Oval Office. Anyways, his documents talk about how they have a Project Pogo thing. It's basically taking these, um, uh, YouTube influencers and so these big time influencers. And then some of them are getting flushed out and just tossed out. But the bigger ones that they can build up, they use to basically honeypot in marks. I'm going to say marks because that leads into something called Project Zephyr. And to him, Project Zephyr means to eliminate these people. And honestly, eliminate, it can happen a different, multiple different ways. Uh, from killing to prison to blackmail to, you know, all kinds, just social uh, execution um, as far as the elimination. Are these things real? No, nah, but you have to be weary of stuff like this, right? Uh, it is, to me, something worth listening to, but taking with a grain of salt because... I mean, he says he fucking got it off like the desk of his of his source in the White House, you know. And at the time, that was Trump's White House, right? But they were about to initiate COG, and yeah. uh, the pandemic was coming. So, like, I mean, if you look at COG, and then you look at like when uh, March fourteenth, when they and, and announced the the Emergency Act, and also announced like HIPAA law, HIPAA certain HIPAA rules were being suspended. Yeah, I remember OSHA that. Susp OSHA suspending their, like, vaccine um, surveillance program, stuff like that. And, th and then you look like now with cases like Douglas Mackey uh, going to prison over a meme. Uh, you look at, like, in my town, or not in my town, but a couple towns down, uh, a kid being arrested for his lyrics, which me and the lawyer has been playing phone tag. I've, I've been trying to find out what happened with that kid, hoping he didn't get charged. And I hope his lyrics fucking suck. I hope his rap is horrible. It's got to be fucking horrible. <laughs> but supposedly he rapped about horrible shit, killing people and and uh, supposedly killing the president. I, nobody's heard these words. So, I mean, if you haven't heard, if the person being threatened hasn't heard the threat, then it is a threat. I mean, right. It, yeah. And the, the other thing that makes it really, really suspicious is like, has, has nobody listened to, to fucking gangster rap or mumble rap or drill rap for crying out fucking loud. Well, And that's an argument as well, because I think it's uh fuck. I don't want to 
you know, disrespect his name, but I think it's like Young Thug. Yeah, yeah, Young Thug. Those, yeah, is it Atlanta rapper? I yeah. believe who is on trial right now. They're using his lyrics, but his lyrics are kind of like over on Wall Street. We shot that fifteen times, you know, and then there's like a police report on Wall Street. This dude was shot fifteen fucking times. It's like, wait a minute, he was rapping about it right there, you know, yeah. like. I can understand that type of shit being used, but if it's some 20 year old in his stupid fucking basement rapping like Eminem was 20 something years ago and you kick in his fucking door, you don't find any weapons. You don't even find any fucking drugs. Then you go to his fucking work, humiliate him, arrest him on federal fucking terrorist charges. Sure. Cause then you can put him in. That's a federal where prison. we are at. That's where we are at. Yeah. So you can say Pogo and Zephyr is not real, which again, I don't think it's real. It's just the fact that listen to what he's saying. It's almost like a Bill Cooper-ish type thing, but in the now of what's about to come with the vaccines and with the fucking uh, surveillance programs and shit like that. And then you look at these certain accounts. Like, I don't want to name names. A dude from Minnesota who got pretty big. His logo looks like it's from ESPN. But like... uh he's posting shit about jews right and he just fucking like broad russian jews right and it's not all jews say it right now it's definitely not all jews most jewish people have no fucking clue what the full story is of their own religion oh, dude, I, I think most jewish people have been psyoped themselves oh yes 100 percent. but this guy's broad stroking uh jewish people and then uh just posting like fake ass pictures that you that have been debunked and just he's one of the types that'll post a picture with a headline but there's no fucking source or link mm -hmm. go into the the tweets and then look at the comments that's a pogo that's a honeypot right there man because the fucking comments are like holy shit man it's like this little corner of kkk fucking racism out in the open mm -hmm. shit right so that's literally a little 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 tiny honeypot with a dude who's got 500 yeah. something thousand followers right he, well but it makes sense get... though right it it makes sense because like a lot of his you know half a million followers or whatever <clears throat> they probably don't know that he's had, you know, previous relationships with like law enforcement and possibly even federal agencies from a previous line of work. Right. I mean, I'm just spitballing yep. here, throwing things against the wall, see what sticks. It's fact. I mean, I, I there's videos of it on my Twitter just showing people you got to be fucking weary of this type of shit. And again, with the honey potting, you look at the, the, the comments on on some of these bigger posts and i'll even say i'll say alex jones i mean alex jones got let back on um which is cool you know uh everybody should be left you know let on twitter but yeah. like now he's posting shit like I guess elon needed a pet i don't know yeah yeah, and then they come right back on, and then they open these spaces, and then you know gargle yeah. the balls. And now brain chips um, are great, just like Steve said, man. Yeah, yeah. But like now he's posting, like he posted just last week, I believe it was like a snuff type video. It's a little girl who had her hands on an ice cream freezer. And it must have been shorting out and nobody seen it was shorting out and she fucking is electrocuted. And it's like, what the fuck? It just wow. says this little baby's in heaven. This is the real Alex Jones Twitter tweeting this, which, you know, he has quite a bit of control of. And it's like, what the fuck, dude? Why are you tweeting this shit out? Like, why are you fucking tweeting this, this out? And then after the Biden, you know, strikes i right uh those spots in where where they hit syria and a couple spots there yeah syria and jordan and <laughs> he comes out spots. and he's like oh you know at least biden went and didn't let them step all over us and shit like 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 yeah good for fucking bombing other people it's like oh, what is, the fuck is, is biden going acting on? presidential now is that what alex was yeah saying? that's 
Yeah, basically. Now he's acting presidential because we can't just stand by and let these fuckers do these things. And it's like, what in the fuck is fucking happening? It's Zionists. Zionists are running the whole show. I mean, when it comes down to it, that's the final rabbit hole, I guess. I mean, Zionists run this motherfucker. Zionists run this country. Fucking, uh, and they don't give a shit, you know? The, reg the, the Zionist people who aren't, uh, you know, some sort of orthodox, deep, uh, Talmudic sort of uh, Jew, they're just foot soldier fucking people. You know, they don't, those people don't give a shit about them either, uh, to be real about it. <clears throat> They're just foot, foot soldier types. Uh, when they talk about a holy war, a spiritual war, like you ain't a fucking shit. <laughs> well, yeah, because <laughs> matter when you have a war, people believe. have to die. Yeah. They're not yeah, going to die. And, They're not no. going to put themselves in positions where they're going to die. So guess who's going to be dying? Everybody and they else. They believe if they die, I mean they're they're chosen anyways. You know they got that Samsonite fucking thing where you know if uh, right. I mean if we turn on them, if the world turns on them, they just fucking if they have them, they just light off their fireworks and hmm. say fuck it. You know they don't they don't give a shit. They're bringing on their goddamn Moshiach, <laughs> or else. It's it's that crazy, right? Yeah, I've played that clip of of Seth Rogen and Mark Maron on uh, Mark Maron's podcast when they're talking about it. And Seth wrote, you know, Mark Maron's like, "Would you move to Israel?" He's like, "Fuck no, I wouldn't move to Israel. They're, they need us there to kill us." <laughs> and again, when when you have like one eight seven seven cards for kids, nobody knows that that's a Jewish foundation ran by oh, I think or something like that. They do now because they have to, but for twenty years they had no no idea it was a Jewish foundation. And then you find out that the song is about bringing in the Moshiach, make the Moshiach come. It's like, uh, wow. People Wait, are like, well, what's the Moshiach? Let me tell you what the Moshiach is. Well, it's the second coming of their Messiah, and he's, they actually considered him the, the, the destroyer. I don't know if you've ever read Revelations, but the destroyer really fucks things up when he comes by. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it fucks things up biblically. <laughs> biblically. Yeah, and... Uh... Which I think... Uh, was it uh, Zechariah know. Sitchin? always uh, said that, that Nibiru was uh, the destroyer that was mentioned in Revelations. Yeah, and then it turns out uh, Zachari Zachari Sitchin stuff is probably bunk. Anyway, I used to be fucking huge in the Planet X, man. I used to be big in the Zachari Sitchin Sumerian uh, stuff. That was, shit, it's 24 now. I mean, that was 14 or so years ago. Now I don't believe any of it. <laughs> the destroyer thing uh, yeah I mean the bible stuff is uh, a lot of it's astrologically metaphorical right because we it's a sky clock up there I mean it's usually right on time too it's figuring out the time that it says and shit like that people take it as God is sending it I guess and they're able to use that and manipulate the masses with it if you look at like oh, yeah. a movie like Apocalyptico uh, is that what it is with the, the Mel Gibson movie where he had these people learn like a dead language for this movie uh, I don't have you ever seen that where it's I haven't a, a, no as to oh it's an amazing it's on Tubi go to Tubi.com right. Apocalypto or oh, it's Apocalypto right so uh and it shows like, uh, you know, these guys get grabbed up and they're being drugged to another um, uh, city civilization in the Aztec world, you know, and they're going to be turned into slaves and some are going to be sacrificed right there on the pyramid. And that's what they would do. You know, they cut hearts out and sacrifice mm -hmm. to the gods, you know, because they needed the rains to come and shit. Like, yeah. Well, they also had the, the ball game. Where they would uh, they would have a sacrifice yep. and then they would play the ball game with the sacrifice's head. Yes, and uh, 
it just shows like they're about to sacrifice a dude and that's when the eclipse happens and it's like these guys already knew the eclipse eclipses happened they're just chopping out hearts and cutting heads off you know as a big show to everybody as you do you know right <laughs> yeah, dude so they can be like oh see we did it man we we totally you know god got all the thirsty blood he wanted and look at now he's gonna bless their crops i'm like oh my god the rabbis they know everything oh jesus i'm sorry i mean the aztec chiefs they know everything we have to go to the aztec chiefs for everything because they're so smart and holy they're the closest to god look at them up on the on the fucking pyramid up there can't get no more closer to God than that, can you? You know, and then it's used to control everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I figured that out pretty early on. Thank goodness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the religions and using the control, I figured that out quite early on. It's just digging now into, like, the the deep orthodox of it. and It's like, yeah. You know, I always knew that someone was trying to fulfill the prophecies. You know, I just didn't know exactly who, you know. I didn't mm. dig deep, deep into who the fuck was trying to fulfill it. I just thought it was these crazy psychos. Turns out it is these crazy psychos, and I can pretty much point the finger right at them. Yeah. Well, the worst part is they're some of the most powerful people on the planet, and they have yeah. command of resources that you know the average person does not, probably never will. So they can, and you know... Uh, they can use those resources to manifest pretty much whatever they can think of. Yeah, and this isn't, this is over fucking millennia. It's over millennia or not. Yeah, I mean, it's at least 2,000 years of this shit. Uh, Do you, you think know, so? Do you um, think it goes back that far? Uh, it goes quite a bit of ways far. Quite a bit. I mean, 2,000 years is quite a bit. I, we look at how many, you know, years in themselves. But, yeah, I mean, they've been working on shit for a long time. They've been working in the dark. They've been working and then accumulating shit. And they literally write this book and change the laws based off of uh, other books and shit. Mm -hmm. Like, they to have your own laws dude this fucking drives me nuts the black lives matter shit right because you know they have the black lives matter burning down cities yelling at poor white people and poor white people yelling at black people and other people and people with rainbow fucking hair about white privilege and tearing down fucking statues and shit meanwhile the motherfuckers with the real white privilege are funding the shit mm -hmm. you know <laughs> <laughs> the ones that get loans from each other with no interest, right? The ones that can fucking, like, they can, like, literally do whatever they want. Like, it got me to thinking, like, I mean, when you think about the story of the scapegoat, right, and the Yom Kippur, mm -hmm. is it? Um, and the fact, like, they couldn't kill the, the goat themselves, you know, but there's, like, it's like the, the, the fucking loophole army or something you know and if they can find a loophole to do it they'll fucking do it and that's how our fucking laws are written too when you think about it yeah. you know i mean like oh. uh if they've got all these loopholes and like well i didn't actually touch you know this so uh, you're off the hook <laughs> you know morally it's bad but you didn't actually do it you know the rocks did it the right. rocks killed that goat right so like it's Dude, that same why do you think the thing. best accountants are Jewish? <laughs> and I'm not just saying that to piss my father off if he ever hears it. Because he <laughs> thought he was one of the best accountants, and he's not Jewish. He's not even close. Yeah. I mean, these... Uh, why are they? Do you got a joke for it? I was hoping for a joke. Oh, that was the joke. <laughs> no, I mean, like... Yeah. It's, uh, I told that to my wife the other day. She fucking doesn't listen to anything. And I was like, it's crazy. Everybody's finding out like, uh, they don't have to charge each other interest. Well, they can't charge each other interest, you know? And like mm -hmm. Kanye might've been right about the whole, you know, <laughs> thing. Well, I mean, which we already knew this, knew but this, then when yeah. you look at the laws, when you look at what is it? The how black, I can't think of the word the name right now. i don't have all my fucking things open right now but that law 
And then you look at the Talmudic law and shit, and it's like they have their own fucking set of laws that you have to abide by because they're a, re a religion, you know? So you have, like, it puts, religion puts, like, this weird, like, I remember working at a factory and people thought it was crazy that Muslims got a certain time off for break to pray. Mm. Meanwhile, the Jews are getting interest-free loans and who knows what else because they're Jewish, right? Like, is there any, like, Hasidic dudes in prison for murder that have murdered someone but didn't actually murder them? Maybe their car accidentally ran over the person or something, you know? And they get to go, well, look it. I didn't fucking kill him. And they go, oh, geez, you know, the Holocaust and stuff. You're right. Get out of here, Mordecai. You crazy, crazy old man. You know, <laughs> I want to sure look into possible. this. I want to look into this now. Because, dude, <laughs> another <laughs> crazy thing is there's a video going around of a rabbi who has shown the video of them pulling the uh, mattresses out, right? Right. And the rabbi goes, oh, yeah, that's probably blood. Like, <laughs> even, like say anything. He goes, yeah, that's probably blood. And they're like, what? And he goes, yeah, because, you know, um, sometimes we'll bring a body down there and we'll a make body? an incision. Doesn't that imply like this? This get this constantly is getting removed. Yeah, this is getting removed over and over and over. Okay, so <laughs> he's like, sometimes we'll bring a body down there and we'll make an incision because we're trying to invoke. Um, I can't remember exactly the. Basically, they're trying to create a golem. Is what I think they're doing. They're oh, not Jesus. trying to invoke something into the body. I think they're drawing blood. And mixing it and attempting to create a golem is what this guy's fucking wow. explaining. But he's saying they're trying to invoke a certain uh, messiah, not the Mos Mosheic, but one of the Rebbe's to bring one of the Rebbe's back. Because a Rebbe's as close to uh, God, I believe, in that religion that you can be almost like a Brahmin, right? A Brahmin is the closest to God in the Abrahamic religion, right? Mm. That's why you had to be a Brahmin. Yeah. But uh, he's talking about, you know, they take a fresh dead Jew guy down there. And in the book, Kabbalah of the Crocodile, it talks about, you know, how they tunnel under a synagogue. And when you under, when you start understanding the levels of hell and stuff, they've got to be as close to that level. So they'll go beneath the lowest level they're at already and go underneath it. And you look at, like, I mean, the Chabad house there, I mean, they were digging on the other side of that fucking wall, and uh, they want to expand that temple, right? They own all the buildings around it, but it's full of tenants, you know, you can't just kick all these people out. But if you if you if you weaken the foundations of these buildings, well, now it causes evictions. They have right. to get out. You right. Know, it doesn't matter who dug the tunnel. Now they got to get the fuck out. Now we can tear the shit down. Now we can build our big fucking massive uh, temple, which isn't the third temple. Steve explained that's got to be in the West Bank there. at the Yeah, house. that's got to be in Jerusalem. It's got to be there. And there they've tunneled underneath that thing trying to weaken its structure. So it'll collapse. Well, there's a, I well, mean, yeah, but there's already a shit ton of tunnels under that, uh, that particular piece of land anyway, have been for thousands of years, allegedly. Yeah. It, yeah. Because they go underground a lot and not just, well, you know what? Now I got to look into that city of Turkey that went down 70 store or seven stories and because, I mean, the Sabadians and the Don May were from Turkey. That's kind of on the way from Israel to mm -hmm. Ukraine. That's the path you take to get to the Ashkenazis, right? <laughs> it gets, this is why the fucking episode got. <laughs> but yeah, that, that book, um, it is funny. The book, that book, um, 
it was funny talking to F. Gardner because he wrote himself into the book, right? And he wrote one of his old books into the book, and it was kind of weird. I'm reading it, and I'm like, is this some sort of like self-promotion in the book, right? And it's about manifestation, and it's about a book that kind of you read the story, but then the last pages are blank, almost like a never-ending story type thing. Mm -hmm. He's talking about manifestation, and it was funny because we had an earthquake here when I was reading that book. I, I was reading the book. It was late at night. I'm sitting out here in the fucking office, and I'm right to a point when Satan and a, and a fucking giant golem are battling in a synagogue, right? And the fucking walls are shaking, and the, the synagogue's nice. crumbling, and there's this vibration I'm hearing, and then it confused me, and I was like, what the fuck? And then the, my <laughs> garage was rumbling, and I just thought it was, that was crazy. And then he, when he was explaining manifestation again, there's a part in the book uh, when F. Gardner appears in the book, and I'm not going to spoil it and go get it. It's like seven bucks. It's worth buying. But uh, uh, I, <laughs> when F. Gardner appears in the book, I, I think if you watch the episode, when he's talking about manifestation, you see my eyes come up because I realize something i'm like holy shit he actually manifested this part right here technically in the book and if people watch enough people watch the episode and people start getting him on you know their shows there's something to this manifestation thing i guess you oh, know yeah. uh but uh and he shows it in that book. I mean, it's it's an interesting book. Again, I don't fucking read. I, I have books. I go through them, you know, to do research, find parts. I got a Bible sitting right here that's like 50 years old. There's one over there, like 70 years old. I got a thing of encyclopedias, you know. But I don't usually sit down and we'll read through a story. And that one I read in like two days. Like, granted, it's 140, 150 some pages or something. But <laughs> when you get to like the hidden stuff and them explaining the the plan it's like holy shit hmm. <laughs> and it's yeah it's uh yeah so yeah there's that rap there's that video of that rabbi i've been wanting to put it on twitter but i've i've not seen it dropped on twitter yet i'm not the master of twitter so i, I don't fucking know it could be i'm sure it's on twitter but anytime people are posting it on bit shoot it's getting pulled down. Uh, I think oh. it might still be in the telegram. I don't see anything ever being actually pulled out of that telegram, especially when the IDF can have a snuff, snuff film uh, telegram. Right. Nothing being pulled down in there. But it's a, it's a, it's a rabbi explaining it, and these rabbis will fucking tell you if you ask them. There's like the Chabad. That's their thing. The Chabad are Hasidic Jews, right? They follow Talmud, Talmudic law. But they are one of the that sect that um, will reach out a hand, so to speak. That's why when you watch like the Dom Lacour and that famous Richard or some crazy wild YouTuber who, who ran to Brooklyn and then busted up into the Habab, Habad uh, uh, synagogue going, on King David, fucking screaming and shit, just making a fool. Oh, wow. They were going to let that. him in anyways. Oh, yeah. I, we, I played a little bit, I think, on one of my episodes. My, I, it might be the one episode that's left up still. I played that. I believe I played that on there. And I played the fucking um, Benny Hill Tunnel Juice. This is crazy that they took my fucking episode down now when you think about it. I mean, yeah. If you go look at Friday's fucking episode. The Friday oh, holy shit. I think I've up, got it. I think I got it right here. Let's see. If if you look at Friday's episode that's up on my website and uh, in the and and the second to the last on my Rumble, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I fucking bring up and show the famous Richard stuff. I start out with that. And my intro is very uh um you know. Oh, there you go. Okay, yeah. is it on Twitter? Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, it's on it's like five. It's like six Pete minutes Quinona's long. Page. It's like six minutes long. But yeah, it's like dude, almost seven minutes, I think. Let's it, see, dude. He fucking <laughs> explains it. Let's check it out. 
Holy to shit, is that their podcast? That's dope. So there's before we wrap up, I don't want to hold you over too long. There was one more viral image going around, there. and this is the one everyone's been talking about. Is this Dirk just pulled up on screen stained mattress that was pulled out of the tunnel being carried by members of the synagogue? So there's a lot of crazy conspiracy theories. I don't want to go down any tasteless rabbit holes. But David, if you could explain why was there a mattress in the tunnels and what is the stain? A lot of folks are wondering, is this stain feces? No, no, it's not feces. What the is stain it? is blood and basically oh, we, right, do, well. we did rituals. I said that before. There were some rituals that, that we, uh, go, we do in the tunnels. And sometimes the rituals might involve... Uh, uh, someone who recently died, and we'll bring him down there, and we're trying to do a ritual to bring back the the Messiah, which is a Schneerson, if you heard about him on the news. So he died many years ago. Just so matter of fact. Oh, yeah, this is what we're doing. We can bring him back. And And so... uh, If you pause it real quick, what's funny is... Was that the main guy who was... The... I had wondered when we first covered this on AM Wake Up, I was wondering, like, it seemed like those mattresses were used as, like, some sound type of shit because there's the paneling and then the brick wall and you seen mm-hmm. one angle that the brick wall when they first pulled that mattress out the wall wasn't open and Steve showed an angle where it showed it was open but then I found another completely different angle showing when they pulled the panel pulled the mattress out there's no opening it was being used it seems like some sort of sound maybe they were hiding them behind the panel i guess but it wasn't like in the hole but it's just funny that this rabbi right oh yeah it was blood hmm. <laughs> just so matter of fact it was blood we do this all the time we we get the right. dead bodies and we're trying to bring back sneerson <laughs> that's insane yeah well, play a little bit more of it all right well yeah we'll go a little bit further instructing on the tunnels well that was a long time he's the he's like the head he's the head rabbi and he's right. the guy that uh, uh we uh look for for direction mm. right and the news was saying that he is potentially not passed on right that's right so we don't know that so we try to do rituals to try to, to bring him bring him back. back correct exactly so how do these can you explain exactly. the rituals and why does it involve a mattress uh, I, I don't want to go to the details of the rituals, but basically we don't put the body on the floor. We put the body right. on the mattress, and sometimes uh, we might make an incision somewhere on the body, and some a little bit of blood will come out. But it's I don't want to go into the details. Yeah, of that's that. fair. Well, you mentioned when we talked on the phone that you brought a book with you. Yes. Is this? Yes, this is the type of book I bought, and this is the type of book that describes different types of rituals and things of that nature. So how does that, like, can you explain the book? Well, well it's too detailed to go through the book, you know, mm. it's a detailed book, but I suggest if you have a chance and you want to get the book, you yeah. can read it. You the know? Book of Living and Dying. Yes, the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying. So where did you guys learn, you guys use this for the rituals? Uh, is this use, an ancient wait, Ju- Judaism we, thing? No, or? we use some uh, different books, and this is one of the books. Hmm. So that's how what did Kabbalah you, like, learn is. this? Uh, Say what? I don't think that's what Kabbalah is, right? Like Kabbalah is these guys who study scriptures, literature. They try to decode all this different shit. And that's what he's talking about, using that Tibetan Book of the Dead hmm. to... Um... Is it fake? That's that's what Pete seems to be saying, but I don't know. If it is, it's good trolling. Because I'm going to go to the Chabad house here, man. We have, we just so happen to have a Chabad Labudovich house here. It oh, they're everywhere, man. Saw. They're all over the place. I thought they, I thought they were all over the place. But yeah. then when I looked up in Kansas City and Tulsa and Dallas, there isn't one. There's This is the closest one. Hmm. As far as the Chabad. Labudovich. There's synagogues everywhere, but when you looking up Chabad, I could not believe it was like, boom, one right in the next town over. It's like, what the fuck? So I want to go over there and I want to ask some questions, you know. Uh, yeah, what, good luck. What's what's the deal? <laughs> good well, luck, the, dude. The Chabad, they that's they what do I was, not, that, uh, they do not that's what I was, uh, like outsiders. Snooping around. That's what I was saying about um, the Chabad. The Chabad are a separate, is the one sect of Hasidics who 
extends a hand. And that's what I was saying about the the famous Richard or what the YouTuber guy who ran up into the thing. They brought him right in. They were willing to talk to him. You know, they were willing to speak with him. Same with Dom LaCour. Dom LaCour, by that time, they already fucking, like, said They were in there drinking vodka and shit, and, like, <laughs> dancing on tables for Sneerson or some fucking weird shit. But they will they open the doors and let them come right in. Now, other synagogues, that ain't fucking happening. Shabbat, Shabbat, the Chabad is the one sect that opens their, yeah, and that leads you to all these connections with high politicians and shit, mm -hmm. right? Creating the Zionism, right? Perpetuating the Zionism. You have this sect of Hasidic Jews, right? Orthodox, deeply Orthodox Hasidic Jews, right? Talmudic Jews who will open up to outsiders, will speak to outsiders. Now are they saying... Hey, we're trying to bring back this, you know, our fucking Messiah to murder all you people. No. Right? I don't think. I, I, I'm assuming they will talk about the return of the Moshiach and shit like that. But they're not going to say, yeah, we fucking, we got to create golems and shit. To, <laughs> there's magic and ward off magic and like everything we do is like magic. Sounds crazy. I know, but. It is. It's all this weird, mad, dark occult, fucking magic shit. They yeah. fucking believe it works. Well, yeah, and the problem is the the deeper that I look into things, the more that stuff starts to make sense, right? Like as as like a motivating force for why people are doing the things that they're doing. Yeah, it's because they're they're following these belief systems and they are doing the actions that they have been taught will bring them what they desire. Yeah. And the fact that like, uh, they need to be victimized. That's another part of the whole fucking thing. You know, they need to be, you know, op oppressed. Mm -hmm. Basically that's a whole nother part of it that uh, people don't understand, which now puts another layer on that. If that thing is a troll and that's a real Jew dude doing the trolling, that's another little layer there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it's a troll, it's a troll. But the fact that you have an elder Jew there, right? It's not like some young dude. It's not like a fucking Jared Kushner in there doing that. Right. That's an old man. Right. You know, he, he, he probably knows a thing about it, uh, knows a thing or two or about a thing or two, you know? Uh, so is it a full troll or is it like a soft disclosure of, yeah. And then people laugh and they go, Oh, they're just crawling. See, blah, blah, blah. And then they turn about and bet on Taylor Swift on how many times she's going to be on camera and move on with their life. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's these open secret things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, again, yeah, the, the whole practice of soft disclosure, right? Mm -hmm. Making sure that the public knows without actually really raising their awareness too much. Yeah. And then you, you yeah. can, again, you can commit murder right in front of them. And, you know, they'll, uh, they'll believe whatever you tell them it is. It's not murder. It's something else. Yeah, and that's, we're definitely moving into that... Uh the final uh whatever of the party was to to not believe your ears and your eyes you yeah. know well they have to that, get that people now. to that mentality in order to have something approximating a global conflict right they have to have people who are willing to commit atrocity against whatever they believe to be the other right because unless you have people in that state of mind, you're not going to be able to get them to kill, you know, whatever direction you point them in, that thing that's in front of them. Yeah. Yeah. We're in a wild times with uh, everything that's going on, the election coming up, 
which is interesting. I don't know if you've seen that Owen Schroyer, Schroyer, Schroyer interview he did with a uh, Russian TV host. Mm -mm. He did the night before last, I think. Yeah, the Tucker thing was released last night, so it was the night before last that he did that. And then saying, like, it's dangerous times when you, I mean, saying the same thing, you know, with the election coming up and with all the the, the stuff that's coming out about just, like, the election, Biden, Trump, all the bullshit, the, the Israelis, uh, you know, the... the we're in a bad spot, mm. you know? Yeah. We're geopolitically. In a bad spot yeah. Because, yeah. Something has to, I mean, if you think like the psycho, something has to be done to really take the fucking eyes off of what's going on. They, they mm. try it with all this, these layers of psyops and shit, but <laughs> now you're seeing this weird flip on the, uh, the Hasidic Jews. You know, you, you're seeing this on the Twitter and finding out that, like, well, white privilege, holy shit, like, <laughs> we're here paying fucking 30% interest on a goddamn house loan, and if I was a Jew, I wouldn't have to, that's ridiculous, like, you know, I mean, they're finding that shit out, they're finding out who's running the media, the media's collapsing, nobody's watching that shit, nobody mm -hmm. watches, you only watch the media to get a goddamn clip sound yeah. bites you know of them saying stupid shit you know <laughs> they don't report on it. it's literally sound bites of the cnn host or misha bartlett or bartlett i always say that that's like a fucking fox lady misha bartlett i forget her name mika Bart, mika. whatever brzezinski mika yeah. brzezinski that was close it's biggie star you know you fucking go and get the latest soundbite of her being upset that they can't control the narrative properly. You know, it's all they're good for. Well, I think anymore. she's just butt hurt, right? Cause she grew up and her dad was always telling her, look, you're going to be in the news media and you're going to be like one of the centerpieces of a network. And like people are going to come to you to find out what the truth is, right? People are going to hang on your every word. She was constantly fed this shit as she was growing up, right? And now she gets to that point and she's like, well, this isn't at all what I was told it was going to be. No. No. I mean, and she lost it uh, on the air. Just for a split uh, second, she lost it. Yeah. You know, I always play that little clip of her talking about uh, Trump. Yeah. Is that the part you're talking about? Yeah. When yeah. We're supposed like, to tell them a, what the news is. Yeah. It's our job. Yeah. Which there's more than one of those. I, I keep, uh, I have so many clips and stuff and I'm uh, constantly sorting through them and stuff. I know I'll find them, but uh, I know there was a clip of one of them on the, on the view saying the same thing. Hmm. And there's another clip of another one on, I think CNN saying the same shit, you know, it's basically our job to control this fucking narrative and Micah or Mika or whatever. She said it again too, not straight out, but you know, when Biden was fallen or some shit and the media was, you know, saying he's an old guy, then they had to come out and go, look, we can't be talking about him like he's old. We got to do this and we got to basically play cover to this. Like, what the fuck? Like, soundbite. <laughs> that's, that's all you're good for, lady, is sound bites of NWO. Any, any clip that has her face on it goes right into my NWO folder, folder, you know, some sort of tyrannical gaslighting new world order shit. Same with anything from New Zealand, anything with one of those guys on it is a gaslighting fucking NWO clip. They're, they're oh, definitely yeah. trying to push the new world order and gaslighting your ass into it. Yeah, Every or most clip. of the politicians in Australia as well. Yeah, yeah. Any of those, they go right into that folder, and then I'll figure out what they're saying later. Because yeah, they're definitely saying something. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> then they needed to go into that fucking bin. Well, was, I was yeah. uh, I was making clips earlier today, and uh, I had something from Antonio Guterres that he said within the last week that it was just so stupefying. I can't even remember what it was right now, but it was all of like 40 seconds. And by the end of it, you're like, wait, he actually just said that? It was something about like who's who's uh, we're already in a multipolar world order and like we don't have the uh, the the controls that we used to have under the old system. So we have to come up with something new or something like that. Some ridiculous bullshit. But it was like, wait, so we're already in the multipolar world world order. It's not something that's coming. It's not five, ten years down the road. It's it's now it's happening now. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, these people can't be more open about it. They can't, like, and that's another weird, because I'm not a Bible person, but in Revelations it says the merchants will come, you know, and the dark ones will come to the fucking, and do their bidding in the light, because they don't give a shit. Like, yeah. what, now we can just say it on Twitter, and be, nobody's going to do anything. You got to have... The majority of America is scared to go voice their opinion where it needs to be voiced, you know, uh, over bullshit, which that's another crazy thing. I'm talking about January 6th, everybody. Uh, I just watched the uh, documentary. I haven't finished the whole thing, but uh, it's called In The Insurrectionist Next Door. This was done by Nancy Alexandria Pelosi. Oh, right? Jesus. So she got the exclusive deals to do deal to do the Nancy Pelosi documentary, which was filmed on January sixth. Um, of that whole thing, right? You can even see them on the CCT video of them stopping, posing, getting, you know, so she could get the right shot of her coming out of the Capitol when they're escaping. Right. Uh so the insurrectionist thing is funny because she's going around hanging out and interviewing, you know, people that are going to prison for insurrection and their charges and stuff and who they are. And every single fucking one voted for Obama. Every single one was a liberal. Uh, one dude, he's heading for prison. They walk into his house. He's got a Trump Christmas tree up. He's going to prison. He's like, this is my husband. You know, he's a gay conservative, you know, Trump. And I don't exactly understand what she's trying to show with this documentary, but everybody is, I mean, the one girl, she supposedly she was in the proud boys. Another one was in the proud boys, but wasn't there. It's just his lyrics are getting him and in, put in what? jail. Yeah. Because he, he's a felon. Uh, and had already been in prison multiple times. And he has this song where he's talking about being locked and loaded, ready for the civil war. Mm -hmm. So they use locked and loaded as he's weaponized and he's making a call of action. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, put it in front of a judge, see what a judge says about it. Yeah. Well, he's going to, uh, he's in prison right now. Uh, I don't know exactly if it was just for the lyrics, but I, as far as I know, he wasn't in, at January 6th. He may have been there, but they've already um, told us that they're drag netting out past that now. Oh, yeah. Uh, at yeah, first, yeah. they told us they were drag netting your accounts, you know, and then they told us that if you were in DC, it doesn't matter if you were there at the Capitol, it doesn't matter if what you were doing that you're on uh the list on the um operation what is it i can't remember the operation skies uh freedom skies or open skies or something something stupid <laughs> yeah yeah but you're on that list that they're not even following terrorists anymore they're specifically only following j6 people on flights u.s air marshals mm -hmm. um and then they came out and they said well now, um, if your receipt says mega or Trump on it, when in actuality, it's if your receipt says Walmart or anywhere that sells guns, ammo, mm -hmm. um, 
or anything like that. You are subjugated to a warrant, to a digital, and possibly, I think, a physical warrant. I know the digital warrant, that is 100%. That's what you're, they're subjugating everyone to. Uh, is it a physical warrant that they can enact? I guess I would have to look into that. The digital, yeah. They, you know, because people, we, we constantly argue, you know, we have the right to privacy and stuff. Okay, you have the right to privacy. Well, that, well because of this reason under law, because you allow us to make these laws and these legalese and we use these words to cast these spells that bind you in these chains, right? This is how we're allowed to come and kick your door in now because you purchase shit at Walmart, right? You could have purchased weapons. We haven't gotten to the point where it's scanning the web, the ammo yet. Right. And you post things on the internet that we disagree with that if we take and we look, we ran it through the AI. And if you look at the past, uh, red flag or uh, false flags that we've caused, uh, you fit the bill. So we got to throw you in jail basically, or we got to kick in your fucking door. We got to ruin your life. We're going to put it all over the internet. We're going to show everybody, you know, and, and make you out as a villain. Even if you don't go to prison, you've been executed socially. You know, mm -hmm. it's a, uh, and it's a dangerous world also with, uh, um, basically like the blackmail, um, world there is, and that has been created and that's going to be dropped. That's why they're, you know, they're prepping everybody with the deep fake stuff, you know, deep fake this and deep fake that, because when real shit drops, they can just go, Oh, it was a deep fake. But yeah. then they can plant deep fakes and they can make deep fakes and you can go to prison for deep fakes. But then when their shit shown, they can just scream deep fake. It's, it's a fucking, it's a fucking wild time. It's a wild time to yeah. stand against this shit. It's a wild time to do what we do. Right, which I don't even think I do that much. I just rant and babble on the internet, you know. Uh, but now they're banning my goddamn episodes on Spotify. I'm assuming Sunday, if I do a show, that'll probably be in trouble. So, only one way to find know. out, you know. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna find out. I like to push it to, to find out because. It, I get banned and I prove things as this happens, you know, that's the whole point is to kind of prove what they're doing. You know, I proved the three platform thing with Twitter in real time on all three separate platforms, how they all show different numbers, how they all show different price points, how they all fucking like there's something going on where they're manipulating the fuck out of advertisers and users content creators people they claim they pay that they monetize and are willing to pay money they're manipulating all of that shit right and i i show that in real time i show the selective censorship in real time mm. you know back to that uh profile i was talking about and then looks like espn but it's not it's missing the e uh that that profile I literally went through that profile. I pulled a couple tweets that said faggot and the N word in them, right? So then I posted using the same fucking words and mine was immediately blocked. It got the limited view, took some of the same stuff, did the same type of post, automatic community notes and then you see this one's not getting that so that's showing the selective uh censorship and what's crazy is that profile will yell that they're being censored right and it's like i, I don't know i don't know if they're in on it they don't even have to be in on it really uh but i feel like that person would totally give them some power they're gonna absolutely corrupt the fuck out of that power believe believe that shit well, I mean, that's, there is, that's been human history, you know? Yeah, there is, uh, uh, you know, there's there's people who are being pogoed that uh, don't even know it, you know? It's the same as, like, sports. Sports, yeah. like football. Not all the players have to be in on it. That's ridiculous. 
Like, you, you know what it would be like to have to wrangle in all them fucking players and shit and keep them all shut the fuck up? Right. Players don't have to really even be in on this shit. No. All you need is you the know, refs. They, That's it. All you need is the refs and the commentators to gaslight you in real time while you're mm -hmm. watching it with your own eyeballs, you know, and they gaslight you into believing that, oh, yeah, his the blade of grass did touch his knee. Oh, okay. You know, and then you just move on to the next bet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's kind of the same thing. You well, I'm shown it right. I'm to glad you brought that up because I was trying to figure out how to seg to uh, this one question. Because we we have a national holiday coming up here in just a couple of days, right? They're they're going to be out there in Sin City, Las yep. Vegas. With the the big superb owl, we're going to see the culmination of the love story of Travis and Taylor, right? So the stage is set. What, what is your big prediction for the Superb Owl this year? Uh, I believe Kansas City loses for one. Uh, people think I'm crazy on that one, but I said that in like I, October that Kansas City was making a... And I didn't even watch any games, but that they were making a uh, late season comeback. They always make the late game comeback, but now they turned it into a late season Cinderella type. Now they're in the Super Bowl. Yeah, they stole that I don't think from they're Pittsburgh, gonna... by the way. Yeah, I don't think they're going to win it. Um, they might, whatever. I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think they're going to win it. The the Everybody seems to think like Travis and Kelsey and Taylor Swift are going to fucking meet on the five yard line, like make babies and then scream, vote <laughs> Biden and take your shots. You know, <laughs> it's not going to happen. I don't you know, know. I, I might don't put 20 bucks on that. <laughs> There's going to be Pfizer commercials. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Um, will uh, Taylor Swift be part of the Pfizer commercial? I don't know. Uh, the fact that before I came on, I seen an article from NPR's Facebook. I didn't read the article. I just seen the headline. I think I posted it on Twitter. Uh, when, because they're literally telling you, yes, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift's love story does look like it's from a movie, but we swear. And the <laughs> NFL swears it's not scripted. When they have to do that shit to you, it's in watch the Paige Van Zant. Uh, the Paige Van Zant thing when she's talking to, I believe it's her husband. Her and her husband have a podcast, and she's like, Yeah, when I was 20 something on Dancing with the Stars, the publicist, publicist called, said, Hey, we got this NFL guy. We think he both both be great. Go out on a date. Sure. They had the paparazzi set where they needed to be at what time, when, blah, blah, blah. And it's a whole fucking thing to make it so that guy didn't look gay. Right? Is Travis Kelsey gay? Dating Taylor Swift, yes. Before you would think no. I mean, he likes some thick booty and some girls, but they have been building Travis Kelsey from the get go to be oh, some yeah. sort of spokesperson. I mean, before Patrick Mahomes was even there, Travis Kelsey was already doing dating shows and, and becoming like this household name. And Travis Kelsey also People don't understand this, but Gronkowski and TJ Watt or JJ Watt, the guy who had the fucking AFib on the yeah. field there after he had the vaccine and nobody talks about that yeah. part, uh, he died, but they brought him back. It's usually how it works. Uh, <laughs> he DeMar Hamlin before the Oh, DeMar shit. Hamlin. That's why JJ but, uh, retired then. Yeah, dude. He just had a baby. He had an AFib and collapsed on the fucking training field. So they, they're, I mean, the way he explains it, they fucking used the paddles on his ass. And then they had to go in and then they had to do a fucking, uh, shit. Now I can't think of it when they go up in there and they shock your heart to burn off certain cells. So it doesn't oh, go damn. AFib again. So yeah. Anyways, JJ Watt and Rob Gronkowski and, uh, they both are younger than Travis Kels. Yeah. So to put that into perspective for tight ends, Gronkowski retired twice 
right? And then um, J.J. Watt, he was on the verge of retiring anyway, and then when his heart stopped, it really made him retire. I mean, if you watch him talk about it every time, he breaks down, and it, it freaked him the fuck out. Mm. Like, I have PVCs and heart flutters a lot. Like, uh, he... I'm standing by that fucking dude died. They had to, they fucking paddled his ass back and then he had to go in and have a ablation. I'm sorry. That's what it is. Uh, basically an ablation. I, I don't know if they went in and burned him. I think they laid the thing on top of his chest that then shocks the fuck out of your heart over and over and maps it. And then they burn off something or they try to shock it into the place uh, from outside. You can go in and shot, burn the cells off and hope that works or you can do a shock from the top and hope you knock it the heart's crazy mm. the heart is is something else but yeah knowing that those guys are younger than travis kels travis kels is still playing um also with andy reed it's his 25th year uh people think something is going to happen at the super bowl if anything were to happen andy reed drops dead is would be my prediction. I, I remember watching in 2020 and I, it scared me in 2020 watching him. I have video of it, of him coming off the field of how red he was. And like, mm. cause there's a lot of stress. I, I, I can't believe he hasn't collapsed before on there on the field. Like he's how old is he? 60 something years old. Fuck something him. like that. He's not the as big as he used on. to be. He like isn't as big as he is. Yeah. He shed some weight over the years. But they're vaccinated, so, and mm -hmm. the high stress, I mean, that to me would be, like, one of the shocking things that could happen at the Super Bowl. Then they start feeding you Ozempic or whatever to make you lose weight. <laughs> and your reed collapses, and it's like, brought to you by Pfizer and Ozempic if you are overweight and feel diabetic. <laughs> But no, uh, yeah, with the Travis Love story after the season, I'm sure it's over. Oh yeah, at it, least after it has the to be election. I mean, unless yeah, again I, I they're they're like it. they're doing this for some sort of like business arrangement where they it's a win win for them, right? Like each of them gets something out of it for the next five years or whatever. Yeah, and it's just like fucking crazy if you're gonna do that but people are nuts you know and they'll do anything for the bucks literally look at dylan mulvaney's website used to say i'll do anything for a buck and look at him now her him whatever they're doing great they got all the money and all the fans and who knows they might even come out tomorrow night on saturday night live that's another little thing of mine is shane gillis gonna come out wearing a bud light dress hmm Right, I doubt his monologue is going to be as epic as Norm Macdonald's monologue when they fired Norm Macdonald and then brought him back. You know, like uh, maybe it is. Maybe it's going to be awesome. I don't know. We can only hope. It's just on. It's just weird, especially in this day and age. I mean, in this day and age, I would just tell him, "Fuck you." Mm. You know, fuck you, Norm. I get it. I get that went back and he burned him in that fucking in the monologue. Uh, but like in today's day and age and SNL is not SNL anymore, you know, it's not like, I don't know. That's just my opinion. It's not, it's nothing what it was before. And then to go back cause they asked you just, you better burn the fuck out of them in the monologue is all I'm saying. Yeah. But it would be interesting if he does do a skit where he's wearing a fucking, you know, he, he, he does a, a woman skit. That that part will be interesting if that happens. Willing? I don't know. Just, right. There's uh, only one way to find out. Unfortunately, I'll be broadcasting then, so I won't be able to watch. I'll just have to yeah. wait for the clips. <laughs> yeah, I can't watch it. I don't have cable or anything. I don't watch the uh i don't remember last time i watched the saturday night live but yeah it'll be all clipped it'll all be clips anyways so yeah and that bud light thing is weird i mean you gotta pay attention to that i mean they got fucking destroyed with the mulvaney thing and then you know now everybody you even got donald trump 
truthing out. Is it truthing? He's truthing out on his truther network. Uh, oh yeah. Should Bud Light should Bud Light have a second chance? I believe they should have a second chance. And it's like, ah, look at you sons of bitches. Hmm. You guys are just you're just you're just like, look, man, drink all you want. You know, be a drunk. I don't give a fuck. But when you think about it, and you think about like. The alcohol and the porno and the debauchery and the bullshit pushed upon the um, population. It's really this Frankenism when you think about it and who runs it and who fucking is distributing it. It's really a form of Frankenism, right? It's this debauchery and this destruction of the social and moral constructs. And uh, that's um, what Bud Light and stuff like that's use for again yeah. it's no judgment on anybody who drinks or enjoys football and stuff like that uh, it's just yeah be more aware of like what the hell you're consuming and what the you know like i've told people on the football thing people really get pissed at me again i mean i have i have this on my body like you can't beat this right here right i mean right. <laughs> And yeah, I have I've watched, two yeah. I've watched two games, which I, I'll be a Kansas City fan for life. That's for sure, you know. But like the sport itself and just like what it stands for, I really started to kind of like zone out. It's so funny, too, because for 30 years, you know, I was being a Kansas City fan and losing and getting close and never getting there. And just this. And then once we're, oh, my God, we're like the new Patriots. And that nah, yeah. fucking give a shit. <laughs> you know, everybody likes Kansas. I seen a Super Bowl. I don't fucking, you know, and it started with the kneeling thing. And it wasn't that players were kneeling. It was that the NFL come out and said they were going to fucking fine players for kneeling. And it's like, whoa, like for one, you just like made a kneeling spectacle because you didn't even show the fucking anthem before to begin with. You just started doing it just so you could start this shit. Because again, mm -hmm. we're here to blame each other. All of us poor people are to blame each other. Why the white privilege is the one running off off having a great time, right? Waiting for like a, us to all be murdered. But they didn't have that. And then Roger Goodell's like, well, we're going to find players for kneeling. It's like, fuck you. You know, they can kneel if they want. They want to fucking kneel. They want to kneel. Don't show the fucking anthem, you fucking idiots. But no, that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to divide everybody. And then it's like all these players keep getting away with like, you know, these domestic assaults and like these crimes and shit. And like, you just got to look the other way. And, and sure as shit, uh, what season was it? Lamar Hunt, I believe his name is. He plays for Cleveland now, but he was like Kansas City. He's like a no neck. Oh, uh, Kareem Hunt. Back. Yeah, man. Kareem Hunt. He was a Lamar. fantastic I'm sorry, back. Lamar. That's the owner. Yeah. <laughs> <That's what I'm, laughs> different different Hunt family. So you always get confused. <laughs> but Kareem, <laughs> that's how much I pay attention anymore. But Kareem Hunt, yeah. And <laughs> the first, the first, like, scandal of the year is Kansas City Kareem Hunt kicks a girl in the fucking head. And it's like one thing. When you watch the video of him like getting her the fuck out of his face and he did push her and shit. And it's like she was right in his face. Like he really didn't have any place. But then he walks up and kicks her in the head. And it's like, fuck, dude. Like you didn't need to do that. Like get her out of your face or whatever. She fell. She hit the wall, whatever. But like you didn't have to go kick her in the head, you fucking idiot. You know? And then it turns out into this big fucking deal. They had been covering it up. And then now we're seeing mm -hmm. it for real. And it's like, I don't fucking give a shit anymore. And here we are. Again, I have it tattooed on my fucking arm. I've seen two games this entire season. I, you know, I was sitting at a Christmas thing with a couple old uh, NCAA players. And when I told them Kansas City was going to the Super Bowl, they thought I was fucking nuts, especially because mm -hmm. I hadn't even watched any fucking football. I'm like, they're like, they're fucking, at that time, they're doing horrible. I'm like, yeah, it's like this. They literally told you at the beginning of the season, they sat down and in the season opener, they did a whole feel thing with Peel, was it from King and Peel or whatever? Okay. Where he's sitting at a table and they're reading a fucking script. Oh, reading. yeah. I remember that. Okay. Yeah. You can't get more mocking in your fucking face than that. And then you yeah. find out 2010 is when the, the, the NFL defended itself as a sports entertainment mm -hmm. industry. Case yeah. closed. They did the WWE you know? defense. Case fucking closed, yeah. you know, and and 
people that don't want to like believe that it's so fucking weird these like like people that will believe this but they won't believe that but they'll believe this and they'll be on this side and it's like what in the fuck it's like so confusing on the whole fucking like you'll believe football but then you'll say that uh, Fox News said in court they're entertainment it's like the fucking NFL said the same goddamn thing well you can't rule, rule, rule. and then it's like this mental cognitive fucking gymnastics mm -hmm. fucking shit to like it's 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 the same thing know. that they do in uh print media, right? The the whole editorial versus journalism thing. It's the exact yeah. same argument. It's they yeah. just wear whatever hat they need to wear when it's convenient for them at that time. And when it's not, then they go and they put the other hat on. Yep. Which is funny, a man of many hats. Just thinks of the little hat with the hat on top. Of the little <laughs> man hat. of many little hats. <laughs> no, I, it's just, I just put a whole thread of, I'm putting a thread of everybody with little tiny hats on, little uh, wise domes, the wisdom cap uh, on. <clears throat> and it's a lot, uh, you know. Uh, someone is there was the one with Putin with his little hat on, and people are like, mm. that's not real. And then I found the whole thing. Where he's at the wall, the videos, and yeah, oh, yeah those aren't technic. Those technically aren't uh, yamakas or kippas. They are ah shit. Now I can't remember the word, but it's the same thing that the pope wears. Okay, which is just it's, a bigger it, kippa. Yeah, it's just all. a bigger version of the same thing, and they give it a different it's name. Funny, that's all it is. The cat. The Catholic says that it kind of got adopted because they were wearing berets, but then it got adopted to this, and it keeps the head warm. It's like, get the fuck that <laughs> keeps the little wafer on your head, keeps your fucking head warm. Shut the fuck up. And in looking at that stuff, I found the Biden. There's a clip of Biden where I'm pretty sure it's a rabbi comes up to him and says, hey, I handmade you this kippa here, this yam uh yarmulke and uh biden's like i got so many yarmulkes you wouldn't believe it and uh you know the guys were like well uh back over here i gave you this other thing that was hand thing and inside of it was the glass remember and he's like oh yeah the glass and he's like you have to smash it and he's like oh yeah you know why they do that at the weddings you know he's not paying attention to him and the rabbi's like no no you have to smash it it's it's a trump uh impeachment uh ritual you gotta smash it you gotta smash it and he keeps like and Biden's not listening, and like now mm. that I'm sure the Jays are pissed because Biden didn't finish the ritual and smash the fucking glass. That you know, because like this rabbi's like really serious. He's like, no, no, it's a, it's a, you you got to break it. It's it's like the wedding thing, but it's not. We did this other thing, and we invoked this thing, and it's for this other ritual. You got to yeah, smash the glass. It's magic. Thing. You got to complete the ritual. <laughs> yes, and Biden's like, oh yeah. And then he just tosses the blue fucking uh, yarmulke on his head. He's like, yep, see, I know how it works. Oh, and then he just moves. <laughs> and the fucking rabbi, dude. I wish there was someone just there focusing on the rabbi to see his his expression walking away from Biden not paying attention. You got to finish this goddamn ritual. <laughs> You're not finishing the ritual. You're not listening. You got to break the glass. Look where we're at now, Biden. Jesus, if you would have just broke the glass. You know, I'm I'm almost upset that we won't get eight years of Biden. Because even if he makes it all the way through the year and, and somehow miraculously becomes even more popular uh, after this next selection, you know, it gets like 83 million votes or whatever. He's still not going to make it million. the full term. Like I, I, he's I so saying. he's in such a bad state right now. Like there's no Horrible. way he goes, makes it another four years. It's impossible. His speech last night, he had to stop off at the old uh, door with pharmacists scribbled on it, pharmacy <laughs> scribbled on it and grab him some fucking uppers. And they didn't even work that long. Like, I mean, he has to come out big announcement, a big announcement. Oh, Biden's going to fucking tell us. Some announcement. Maybe he's going to say, I quit. I'm out of here. You know, you got me. I'm old. Uh, I'm going to pass the reins off to this little girl here, Kamala DeVille. And like, <laughs> no, he comes out and he's like, 
Yeah, it says I'm old. Basically see now, but they didn't charge me, bitches. And then <laughs> Mexico needs to open up Gaza. Peace. Like <laughs> But they said you 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 are old and you fucking are your cognition is stupid. Nah, it's cool. Fucking Mexico and they really need to open up that damn Gaza border. It's ridiculous. Uh and then he, he almost gets away. And someone yells out something about God. He almost got away without saying the whole Mexico needs to open the Gaza border thing. Hmm. But then he's all the way to the door and's like, oh, nope, I think I got to go back and answer that. And there's got to be people like standing around like, no, no, uh, no. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, shit. Anthony Blinken's just back there like, oh, my God. You know, <laughs> <laughs> why is he ah, why he was so close he was right here why didn't you reach out and grab him now he's standing back over there it's bad yeah but think think about the juxtaposition with the the tucker putin interview right you've got oh. two hours of like putin may not necessarily be mr charisma right nope. but he can he can definitely hold his own in a conversation against anybody doesn't matter oh. who it is and then you've got fucking grandpa uh, running around in his depends, right? Fucking, uh, he should have gone down for a nap like at least two hours ago. But no, he's, he's still up there single, fucking puttering. <laughs> every single day is a new Biden flub. Every fucking single day. That guy can't get through a day without some fucking biden flub yeah and you do know, you remember how early Fetterman... the mainstream media called victory on on biden gaffes it was like we were like 60 days into a biden presidency and they were like oh biden hasn't screwed anything up yet looks like we're gonna be okay <laughs> you know <laughs> like they were parading fetterman around a lot you know and fetterman is you don't know who's worse fetterman or biden you know i mean they're like the same thing and they don't give Biden Fetterman's fucking better captions or whatever the hell is going on with whatever he's got. Uh, I think they actually the that program Luke... Biden's teleprompter with all the shit that he flubs. Like they do it to him on purpose. <laughs> they know how to how to it. like hit that switch. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, it makes good TV. It makes good conspiracy. It makes uh, it's it's just yeah, you can't. He cannot go a day without one, without something, without some sort of flub, some sort of like, like I always show that one clip of him running through and he's got this hat and I can't remember exactly who it's for. He's like, I got the hat. And everybody's like, yay. Chocolate chip. Yay. It's like, God damn. And then, yeah, Putin sits there and he can give you a history lesson all day and, you know, he could he could have done European history for fucking two hours, right? Okay. And <laughs> Tucker was not compared prepared for it. Tucker thought he was going in and in, like interviewing someone like Trump or something. Right. Is what I feel like he was going in. I mean, that time when he laughed, it did his stupid Tucker cackle or whatever, and Putin's just like straight faced on him, you know, and then Putin keeps busting on him. Yeah, I mean, he thought he was going in, I guess, in interviewing someone like a Donald Trump, but uh, no. And Putin speaks English. That's mm -hmm. another thing. I was like, I kept thinking, is he going to fucking speak English on this one? Is he going to? Because 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago, his English was pretty good. Yeah. You know, uh, although he looked very sickly back then, uh, he I was swapped out, but his English was pretty good 20 years ago to say it's not vastly improved over the last couple of decades is ridiculous. And that's just another ploy to like have the upper hand, I guess, mm -hmm. is to not speak English and then stuff can be lost in translation and shit. But yeah, as soon as it came on, you seen the little thing in his ear. It's like, oh, that sucks. I was hoping he would have said, fuck y'all, I'm going to speak English. That way you can fucking hear exactly what I'm saying. And you don't need this dumb translating twit over here. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah, I think that but, just speaks to just how much theater 
it actually was, right? Because like yep. unless yep. unless you actually speak both of the language, you you have to rely on what the yep. translator is telling you. Yep, and uh, that's uh, another like wild difference between like Ukraine and Russia and Israel and Gaza, right? Ukraine and Russia, when we watch videos of soldiers and people speaking, I have no idea what the fuck. We don't have any fucking clue. But Israel just so happens the majority speak perfectly good English and they can mm -hmm. fucking tell you about all the propaganda in full, full fucking perfect English. And the theater part, 100% fact. If you go and look at David Letterman has his show on Netflix, something I interviewed David Letterman or the, I, I don't know what it is, but uh, was it two years ago? The first episode I believe was him interviewing Zelensky. Maybe it was the middle of last year, so, well, it's probably longer. Hmm. Um, he, him interviewing Zelensky in Kiev, right? And was that before or after the military operation had started? It was after. Okay. I mean, like, uh, so like they're doing their shit down in a uh, subway, right? To be safe because the air raid fucking sirens keep going off, and there's one part where like. Well, right at the beginning, David Letterman's like, he's got the stupid piece in, and Zelensky's got the stupid. He's like, you're not gonna do English. You you won't do English for his sake. No, it needs to be authentic. You you can learn the the you get you know he does that shit, and then the train is like on a loop. It's like on a fucking Christmas tree loop. It just keeps passing. <laughs> Boy, it goes one way, and then it comes back the other, and they're like they have to stop, and they go ah, it keeps us safe. This train, as long as the train's running, it means we're safe, you know. And then, <laughs> then there's a part where the sirens go off, and Letterman's like, oh. and Zelensky's like, don't worry, no worry, that is a reminder of the war. And it's like, what? You're fucking telling people that you fucking set off the air raid? And then Biden went there and they did the exact same thing. Remember, Biden's mm -hmm. walking through, the air raid goes off, everybody hustles around just to get the photo off. And they're like, shouldn't we like do something? And they're like, nah, it goes off all the time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and the... Uh, the David there's Letterman actually an thing. air raid siren right down the street from me i'm gonna start doing that shit <laughs> it just it fucking goes off and like don't worry that just reminds us that there's shit going on out of, over the wall over there and uh, david letterman they took him on a t like walking around kiev right and in the middle of kiev is like a memorial to war where they drug tanks and vehicles from the war zone, supposedly, drug them into the middle of the city. So they could set them up to remind the people in the city where there's no war mm. that, yes, in fact, there is war going on out there. So just be mindful of it, guys. And it's like, to me, I know how much it takes to move heavy equipment. Yeah. And you're telling me you drug a low boy out there to drag a fucking, the fucking, the tracks falling off the tank. You know what it took to drag that motherfucker onto the onto the low boy and then drag it all the way into the city, then right. back off the low boy just to like. Well, ideally you get brain. like a crane, you know, and just yeah, lift it. It's even so you worse. Have to drag it. Yeah. That's even harder because it's even. But it's just more expensive than a. Oh man, man, because we move, uh, we move like D tens and shit. We move like mm -hmm. big, big fucking dozers, massive dozers to try to get like a a heavy equipment crane out there to lift that onto a low boy. And then it's in a war zone. It's heavier than uh, a fucking bulldozer. You know, it's got a turret on it. It's got like, but what are we talking about here? No, those things were just put there. In fact, I bet if Letterman would have went up and knocked on one of them, he would have found out it was a fucking inflatable. Hmm. You know, they're standing there and there's a humming going on. And I was like, what's the humming? Oh, it's just the fans that keep them inflated, you know? <laughs> like the plane because in Afghanistan at the airport. The Afghanistan yeah. plane is 100% an inflatable. You cannot oh, yeah. get around. You can tell I from sent, the picture. Dude, <laughs> like I sent it's that bad. to a friend of mine and he's like, what are you trying to say? That's fake. 
And I'm like, what, what are you, what, what are you trying to say? How the fuck do they see out the windows? What are you talking about? And then he's sending me pictures of like these things up in the air, these KC 135s up in the air. And, uh, you can see through the windows. Nobody has like completely blacked out windows. And then I made that video where it shows not only that it zooms in onto the window, but then in the bottom corner, while that plane is moving, it shows the inflatables they have amazing inflatables we're talking mm -hmm. inflatables that have the landing gear on them mm -hmm. full scale inflatables they inflate within minutes and people are like well they're hanging off that and it's like who cares i just showed you they have like a working moving inflatable with real wheels and real like a landing gear on it if once it's fully inflated you can't tell the fucking difference. And they've been doing that shit, shit since World War One. And then hmm. to find out like one of the biggest uh, inflatable decoy factories is right there in Ukraine. Really? <laughs> I hadn't heard that. I have a video. Well, me and Shepard, uh, when I was on Shep's uh, show, when we were on it, we were trying to get ATN off the ground. Uh, we covered that and we showed, uh, I can't remember where I found the clip, but it's showing the, a factory in Ukraine. Uh, it's one of the biggest factories that does the inflatables and it shows they can do tanks. They can do like the six wheel fucking armor, try, anything you want inflated. They got you, man. And it will look really shit. Trust us. You just put it out in a field. Nobody will know the difference. And unless you go up and push on it, as long as they don't touch it or push on it, it's fine. And that's, yeah, it, it's funny. That's though. crazy, man. That, yeah. They make them right there in Ukraine. Well, I mean, they've got, they've got the, the masks, right? Like they can make anybody look like anybody with these, yep. these fucking masks. And they've had that technology for at least a couple decades now, if not longer. Yep. You're talking about like a latex type, the, the mask they can put over. Yeah. Our digital mask. No, yeah, the, the, the physical ones. masks. Yeah. Yeah, and you always see the thing about like, oh, Biden's wearing a mask or so and so, and it always show like a seam like mm -hmm. right here. It's like, what the fuck? Or like Why a weird would they bulge put... like at the bottom well, of the neck or something? <laughs> that would make more sense than a fucking seam right here because, dude, why the hell would they risk someone putting on just a fucking face mask when right. they have the whole upper torso thing to make sure something like that is not seen, yeah. you know, Elon Musk has got a weird neck. If you ever watch that guy, sometimes he's got this weird scar thing. It's like this weird indention scar. Sometimes it's there. Sometimes it's not the, the Bill Maher episode is when I first noticed this weird indent in his neck this weird and I've I say all the time with Elon Musk, dude, that dude is a deep fake. I mean, for some reason, it doesn't matter if he's sitting there with Bill Maher, sitting there with Alex Jones, or what the fuck ever, his mouth always looks like it's never matched with what's coming out of it. Right. It always has this weird like the de delay thing, you know, and I don't know what's my thing is anything on the TV and your black scry. Yeah. You, you have to take it as it's bullshit and that's kind of where they want us, but they really want us to believe that in our reality, not just on the TV. They want you to question your actual reality, right? Uh, when you're questioning what's happening on the, the black screen and the scry and the histories that they, the bullshit they fed us, that's one thing. When you start questioning your very fucking like physical realities and shit, I think that's where they really want to get us. And they've got it in a way. I mean, when you look at the trans movement and people questioning their physical beings, you know, is a part of, of that. Uh, don't believe your ears and your eyes shit. Don't believe your body. Don't believe your gut. Don't believe your heart. Don't believe your mind, you know, and they tell you, they gaslight you on that too. Look mm -hmm. what they did. What was it in 21 when they ran the articles of, uh, you know, 
doing your own research is bad for you basically yeah. it's like what the fuck dude like first you're telling me i was supposed to go to a library pull out this thing this index you know and you taught me how to use that thing to find the book i want to get the research but now that it's at my fingertips i'm stupid what the fuck is going on <laughs> you know it's, now it's all the, part now, of now demoralization I, <laughs> Yeah, now that I yeah. don't need your stupid card index, I can just go, wow, oh, I don't like that one. Let's find this other one and make sure it's like that. Oh, this one's saying the same thing. Nope, that's wrong. That's totally wrong because you got it on the internet, you idiot. It's like, what the fuck is happening? Mm -hmm. There was like a war on knowledge happening. Well, you it's, know? it's an inversion, right? Yeah. It's like basically it's since, since the coup started, everything has been inverted. You know, and that's there. There are a number of of different uh, theories about like why that took place, right? Like why why that sudden immediate shift happened. But I think the easiest explanation for it is we're in a transition period, right? We're transitioning from one age into another age, and there's always a period in between where everything's just kind of apparently chaos it's supposed to appear as chaos you know everything is upside down until it's not anymore you know it's like yeah. the, the way i've always described it is it's like the saturnalia of the ages right it's that that just in between period yeah and that again uh, i brought up the frankenism and when you look at something like that that plays right along with it causing this chaos this fucking debauchery this the limits of morality basically is the frankenism to frankisms is to push the limits of basically do anything and everything to mm -hmm. experience anything and everything and yeah i mean when you look at what's put in front of us and the inversions and 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 the bullshit that's fed to the masses that has some that's a major player in that thing when you look at who controls what they're what they're feeding you and stuff this frankenism thing is like god damn what in the hell but yeah every, everything with everything being inverted um in this chaos this uh it's it's need it's needed to them it's needed it's needed to usher in their new fucking. Well, it age. disrupts uh, everybody from their established patterns, right? It, it basically has the effect of wiping the slate clean for people who are not in control of their own minds, right? So all the old programming, all the old subroutines that they had from the before times, that stuff all gets thrown in the trash. And what that does is that creates a fresh canvas, to start, you know, creating upon or to start yeah. installing new subroutines onto, you know, and create the exact yeah. type of people that you're going to need for whatever the fuck your new order is going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wedding cake biops. Yeah. Uh, well, that's a, that's yeah, a huge know. fucking black pill, so we don't have to dwell on it. <laughs> but uh, I, I was curious to know what your favorite interview on AM Wake Up has been so far, because you guys have, have gotten some really incredible guests over the course of the last six to nine months. Like, which one did you have the most fun on? The most fun? I don't know. The last couple of times Whitney Webb's been on, I've really enjoyed those. I think she's been on twice since I've been uh, co-hosting. She was on one of the days when Sam Tripoli was on. Uh, yeah, I think Whitney Webb is like one of my favorites. Um, kind of vibe with what she with what she's got to say there, and it turns out it's usually pretty fun with her on. I would say that. So are you are you sick of talking about the shaman at this point? Um, no, I haven't talked about shaman. He's kind of disappeared. Yeah, I noticed off that. My radar. 
Um, I don't know where he went to or what the hell is going on. I know he was running for Congress or whatever, but <laughs> as far as on my feed, he's completely kind of disappeared. So I don't know what's going on with him. Unless people got hip to his shit, I guess. Could be. Could be he had to drop off the radar for a while so people forget. I'm sure yeah. he'll resurface at some point, you know. He, he's like herpes. He goes away for a while, but he always <laughs> comes back. I, I, yeah, I would assume. I mean, like, uh, it's funny with him anytime, uh, you know, J6 is brought into the media, he, then he can make his rounds because they use him. You know, he is the poster boy of J6, you know. And that's another thing. If you watch um, Insurrectionist Next Door, there's a couple other things. I always made a point of like, that guy never, you know, lost any, never got his horns knocked off or anything. There is a point when he's in the Senate chambers, he actually took his horns off and set them on, mm. the, on the desk there. Uh, but yeah, I, they, they're all, uh, you got to be weary of this shit, you know? Is he like CIA or something. I don't know. I don't fucking know the guy personally. I'm just going off my observations of the shit I see and the stuff he says, you know, I mean, he spits a good game, you know, when he's talking about free energy and all that shit, you know, but I just feel like, uh, when it comes to like the virtue of what they're trying to do, they're fucking lying, you know, mm -hmm. it's not. Well, he uses deceptive not, language. Yeah. Like anybody who's who's used to spotting deception can pick up on it really quick. Like he tries to direct you and your thoughts in a specific direction while he's speaking. Mm -hmm. And he uses very well placed um triggers in order to make that happen. And those triggers being uh specific words or like aphorisms or that sort of thing. You know, like saying well, uh, what was the one thing that he said uh, that everybody in the chat uh, was going off about? Like, was he said, have you ever heard of Operation Gladio? Yeah, I Gladio. Think, yeah. Yep. Like that, that's yeah. an, one example right there. Like, again, you shouldn't yeah. assume that, you know, everybody knows everything that you know. But if, if, if you understand the audience that you're speaking to, and especially this particular audience... I would doubt there's anybody in the AM wake up audience that doesn't know about Gladio. Yeah. Because we're already, you know, when that stuff's brought up, we're already far beyond shit like that, you know, and then you're going to bring, yeah, bring shit up like that. And it's <clears throat> watching him. Um, when he starts, I wish I would have went harder. I wish I was a little bit more prepared. Plus more shit came out after our interview, yeah. you know, uh, other videos that I'd never seen before. And I'd asked him how he got in there. And he said, well, I walked in, you know, you seen it on video and it's like, yeah, you did walk in, but it's like, uh, now the more you look at these other videos and like, how the fuck did you get right up to the fucking door and you still have your fucking horns on and, and you don't lose anything. And, and then you get escorted out the fucking building. You get escorted around the building. My main thing again, was ritual stuff, which mm -hmm. that's another thing that irked me there because when I'm trying to hit on the ritual of like, you know, you were used for this blood ritual, right? I mean, you, they literally led you into the sacred chamber. They fucking stood there, told you this is very sacred. You went right to the podium in between the fucking pillars. You fucking sit down. Ashley Babbitt's fucking murdered. There's multiple people fucking. And that's a questionable, the Ashley Babbitt. But when we look in the grand scheme of the, the, the ritual of itself, then there's the Ashley Babbitt thing, Roseanne Borland, blah, blah, blah. And him to go, no, no, I'm just a rice pebble on a fucking speaker, you know, <laughs> just moving around. The police wanted cymatics, me to help man. get it's people all out. Yeah, yeah the, the police wanted to help me get people out. And it's like, you never once were like, get out of here. You know, we need to leave until after you did the ritual. And even when people came in stage left, 
and started pouring in the door. It wasn't like you took up the go, get out of here, everybody. We can't be in here. No, you continued and then you did a prayer and then you furthered the ritual. So I was bringing up those ritual things and he was just kind of side dancing them, rain dancing them, I like to say. But uh, two days later, he puts a post up that him and so and so are coming out with like this uh, occult J6 uh, podcast to tell you the real. Right. ritual occult symbolism of it and shit and it's like dude you were sidestepping everything i was saying which i never watched any of that shit if they even did a fucking episode you know hmm. uh and i'm assuming that's exactly the first episode is talking about the blood ritual and the horny man oh, oh they might have used me Ooh, you know i, I don't know. but the, the other clips of him getting pressured by other you know i left this uh podcast i mean one of them he's like well not everybody in the swamp is bad it's like, what the fuck not everybody in the deep state is bad <laughs> okay dude i guess i mean it's <laughs> i mean i i don't i don't know i don't know everybody in the deep state but so far everybody is uh their track record sucks yeah you know i mean can you give me an example of one guy who in the deep state that doesn't have a shitty track record nah he's not gonna give you one example of one at least one guy it's, there's a lot of people in the deep state here you can give me one guy you know that might not uh, be such an asshole you can't so it's like the cia blood in blood out you know Yes, Jacob Chonsley is very questionable. Do uh, I don't care. I'll talk about it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he seems to have dropped off the, the radar. I don't know what he's doing now. Because he would jump into any space that would open. You know, if it was a blue check park oh, yeah. space, you'd see Jacob Chonsley jump in there. He was uh, He was very active for a very short amount of time. Yeah, so I don't know what happened. I don't know if he got like a talking to or some shit or I don't know. Now that we've said something, now I'm sure it's, he's going to pop up in my thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, you know. It's not going to pop up floor. in my feed because I'm blocked. So I'm blocked too. That's what All I was right. going to say. What's weird is, uh, you know, when they first started the blue check mark thing, you know, uh, in my for you, everybody that had me blocked kept popping up in my for you's. Like I can see their tweet, but I can't do, I can't comment on it. Right. I can't retweet it. When you click on it, it'll just say, you can't see this. And it was constant because people have me, the only people I have blocked are any, any profiles that come up and have ad next mm. to it. I automatically just block it. Get the fuck out of here. Get out of here. Ad. You don't I block the, the, the porn bots. I haven't had a problem with porn bots. There was really? one that came into the messages that kept. There's a couple times where like I'll get like a message request, which I didn't even know you could do that. I don't have like anything set. I don't think for messages, huh. but for some reason, a message request will pop up. You'll click on it, and I'm assuming it's a fucking porn bot because it's like a hot chick. Like yeah. follow me or something. I those yes, I block those. I delete the. DM thread to block those. But anybody of you that talks shit to me, I usually follow them. Uh, anybody that's trolling me, I I give them a follow. I think it even might say that in my profile. If you talk shit, I will give you a follow. <laughs> that's an interesting way to handle it. I haven't thought about it. Yeah, that way. and then I completely. Steve pointed out like people will mute you, mute me, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh shit, I didn't even think about the mute button. I completely forgot there was a yeah. fucking mute button and I'm wondering why, you know, cause I'll tag people. I'll, I'll fucking go right at people. They're muting me. Apparently. I mean, that's what it is. They'll mute me, but then interact with some dude who's got eight people following right. his pro. It's so right. like, whatever, dude, you know, like it's whatever. Uh, I'm a little bit of an asshole on the Twitter. I guess. <laughs> Uh, one Funny day we up. might we might have to uh, have a little competition on that. See which one of us can piss more people off the quickest. Because I do pretty <laughs> yeah, good, I mean, you know. I it's like uh, you know I, I, I the blue check mark really pisses everybody off. 
And I can't believe nobody's coming after me, you know, because I even tell you I made a deal with the fucking devil. I pay four dollars last month because they had a four dollar tier. I didn't have to give them my apparently some of them there's a thing to put your face when you verify. It's an option never done for it. now, I guess. Someone was explaining it on AM Wake Up that you have to like fucking put your face for one of the things. It's optional right now, but how many people just went oh right to it? You know, when the blue check mark. Well, thing. some people already have, get... have their their facial biometrics stored in their phone, so they probably don't even have to do that. They just use what's already there. Yeah, it, but just doing the verification process, I guess, with Twitter, you had to. Mm -hmm. The phone. I heard you had to give like an address. Some of them were giving up IDs, a fucking face thing, and all oh, these crap. people ran. That's all KYC, people... man. Let's what? know your customer. <laughs> no, seriously, that's for the financial <laughs> side that Elon's trying to bring in. Yeah, because it's it's the everything app. You can't say yeah. it anymore. And and everybody ran out and got the blue check mark immediately. Some of them paid for a fucking year, and then when they get suspended, they get all fucking pissed about it. And here, when it happened, I I tweeted out. I said, "Dude, five bucks, no blue check mark, no verification. Let me post my goddamn long videos." Like three months later. How about four bucks? No verification. Post your stupid long videos. No blue check mark. Mm -hmm. Okay, deal. I get. <laughs> I don't have to give any. No new info. No new nothing. You can use the same fucking prepaid credit card. You ain't gonna fucking deal with the motherfuckers. But everybody else ran out and fucking paid. Got their blue check mark. They don't. They don't do anything else with it. They don't, you don't see a lot of these guys posting. As soon as I seen that $4 thing, I didn't have to verify. I didn't have to fucking add nothing. I didn't have to, I even tweeted out. I said, Hey, made a deal with the devil, retweeted my thing. I paid four bucks, fucking attack me. And boom, immediately I'm putting open secret. I'm putting fucking like Franklin cover up. I'm putting every goddamn fucking crazy. We, we ran fucking, which we don't need for the blue check mark, but we ran uh Europa for some reason. Europa is still running strong. Hmm. on all four fucking Twitter profiles at 13 or 12 and a half hours long. Europa is still running on Twitter. I wow. keep seeing the Europa Twitter got suspended and people keep talking about Europa and I'll go throw them the link. Like, check this out. This shit is still running <laughs> from Christmas. At some point, I'm assuming all of our uh, Twitters are going to get locked. Either we're oh, yeah. We're going to go down or be completely locked because shit. I went for two weeks where every fucking day, every single day in real time, I'd be like trying to get a screen recording of something and boom, my fucking Twitter would lock. <laughs> and it's, it's making you do that robot thing where you got to yeah. count rocks, yeah. but then something's missing and I can't go through everything and try to find what is missing. And then it went from, telling you you have to delete this tweet to then into the arcos fucking mm -hmm. thing to not telling you it was a tweet that that pissed them off to like yeah i mean every fucking day sometimes two times a day oh was wow me there for the last couple of weeks with that stupid thing and someone pointed out that's another thing psychologically you yeah. the robots making you tell that it it's not you're not a robot yeah. and look at how many times it's hitting you with this over and over and over and well it's over. not only that it's also conditioning you as the end user to get used to jumping through more hoops yeah. to get your reward yep yeah. it's yeah i mean it's all this psychological fucking yeah. Wedding cake of psyops is what we're living through. A yeah. massive shitty fucking layer upon layer upon layer upon. Look at that Dom LaCour thing. To me, that was like a weird layered fucking, I don't know what shit sandwich happened with that thing. When he put out his supposed tunnel documentary and like. There oh, was he did a documentary? Well, it was supposed to be like a 20-minute tunnel documentary. They did an interview with a dude named Manny Wax, who is a uh, a victim of child abuse within by rabbis, right within the uh, within Judy, uh, 
I don't know if it was with the Chabad, but within the Hasidic sects of, of, of Judaism. And Laura, I can't remember her last name now, but she did an interview with him, I guess, like an hour-long interview. And they took a piece of it, had Dom sitting, just going like this at the screen, agreeing with him like he was interviewing. Now, he never said he'd interview anybody. He never said he did an interview. These these are these plausible deniability things, right? So everybody jumped on it immediately because Manny tweets out that he didn't give Dom permission. He didn't do an interview with Dom, that the interview was from the first thing I seen was over a year old, right? Is what they're saying. So then everybody's attacking Dom on this. And it's like, well, is the interview real? So I DM that Dom. I said, you better drop this fucking interview like right now. Like you're being just fucking destroyed. If this is a real interview, you should probably drop it. And then they dropped it in full. I don't know if it was because of me DMing. Hmm. Then they drop it in full. So then you watch it, and it's like, God damn, the shit this dude went through. Well, at the very end of it, she asked about, he's in Australia, this man he walks. She asked about the Habad tunnel. And right away, his eyes like light up. He seemed pretty excited to answer about it. And it's just him giving his opinion and his thoughts. He had been to Habad. He had been to the 707. 770 young as a younger because it is the headquarters of the Shabbat, uh, Chabad Levitch. Uh, but the way they put it together made it so like now nobody's seen the interview, right? Nobody has watched the interview in its entirety. So it was like this like they're claiming they were trying to reveal like uh reveal something through this documentary and then the actual reveal is just like what Manny Walks went through his opinion on you know what's going on through Shabbat because he said you know it's lawless the first thing I thought of it's lawless and the people that get caught up when it's lawless like that are the children of the most you know susceptible to these things which is true that's fact granted it's an opinion but now nobody's watching the the interview now the interview is discredited it was like Manny was discrediting his own word. It was such a fucking weird clusterfuck. And it sounds like a fucking after. limited hangout is what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, it was such a weird clusterfuck. And then everybody's going after only Dom and completely ignoring. There was a whole team involved in this. They spent more time editing this stupid clip. Of, it's an hour-long interview. They literally used this, this little chunk of it. And they spent more time editing wow. Dom sitting in front of a green screen than they did going walking around New York and trying to look at tunnels. And all they did was went to where the mole people are. We've all seen those videos of the mole people. Right. You know, the, the train things. And they lived in the fucking holes and shit. We already fucking knew about that shit. You know, and the tunnel thing. <laughs> I don't think they were making tunnels either under Chabad. When you... Look at these uh, Orthodox. Uh, yeah, I mean, they were going underneath that synagogue. I think they were trying to weaken the structures around mm -hmm. them because they want to make a bigger, uh, a bigger uh, temple. But also reading the book, Cabal of the Crocodile, granted it's a fictional book. I mean, it makes sense. They go below the synagogue because they got to get the closest they can to the underworld to create these fucking golems and whether that clip of that fucking uh, rabbi was, or that Jewish dude won't say he's a rabbi, but is real or not. That's a soft disclosure thing. I mean, him holding up the Tibetan book of dead, that's, that's Kabbalah shit. That's stuff they go through. They dissect every fucking page of books like the, the, the book of the dead with the Tibetan book of the dead. And then they use that and they use it in the way they need to use it. They basically cherry pick it in a way to use it for their scripture, use it for their own laws mm. is, is what Kabbalah is. They study scripture. They study the Torah. They study the Bible. They study the, the Quran. They study all these books of literature. And then within the faith, rabbis are seen as these like all knowing oh, yeah. people. Yeah. These, they know the rabbi is the authority. Exactly. And then the Rebbe is a step even further. A Rebbe is like a Masonic type uh, mm -hmm. living 
messiah type figure. It's very, it's weird. And again, not all Jewish people know what's up. Not all, uh, there's a hell of a lot of Jewish people kind of just going about their Jewish uh, ways. They have no fucking clue that underneath it all, their whole religion is to invoke the basically the Antichrist to smash everybody that's not, uh, you know, Jewish. <laughs> in a nutshell, <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, well, this is in a nutshell. It's there to it's there to smash Jewish people too. Don't get that twisted. Uh, oh it's, yeah, but it's it's, it's to smash to... all of the unclean, right? Yeah, all and of there's the, yeah, there's it's, unclean it's the in there. like every group. Yep. And uh, matter of fact, most groups are mostly unclean, according to them. Yeah, and when yes, <laughs> <laughs> they write it down, man. <laughs> like, don't kill the messengers here. Okay, they wrote it down. I didn't oh, write no, it this down. Is, this is Liberty Radio, man. Our people can handle it. <laughs> it's just funny because that's what it comes down to. You know, they want to call us like Nazis and anti-Semites and and try to put this, you know, this mask on people. And it's like I'm I'm don't fucking kill me. I'm just I'm not I'm the messenger here. I'm just telling you. They they fucking wrote it down. They sit around. They have like a fucking. They have to sit around and have opinions about it. It's almost like a Supreme Court of uh, the Jews, I guess. And they sit around and they fucking like, nah, okay, maybe, uh, yada. And they create new laws and fucking they live by old crazy fucking laws. And some of those laws are scary as fuck. Oh yeah. And it got me to think, you know, in the in the Talmud where it says, you know, any Gentile uh, caught uh, worshiping on the Sabbath shall be put to death. It's like, oh, shit, no wonder they fucking worship on Sunday. Nobody wants to be put to death, you know, so they move their fucking day of worship to right. Sunday. Right? I mean, like, that, that's just a theory. I haven't found where that's actually what happened. But, like, dude, their book says if you're caught worshiping on Sabbath, you're to be put to death. So I bet a bunch of people got together and said, you know what? Let's just skip the dying thing. We could just move it to Sunday. It's not a big deal. It's, it makes sense. The sun, Jesus, it's fine. Cool. We'll just move it to Sunday. And they're like, you better move it to Sunday, you sons of bitches. You know? <laughs> it's so fucking weird. It's so weird. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> people... Especially the atheist people and the people who aren't in the, the religion and stuff are like, I don't care. I don't believe in it. It's like, ah, oh, well, you don't have to believe in That's it. That's right. Like, it actually doesn't matter literally... whether you believe in it or not. <laughs> and then explaining to people ritual and be like, you know, you took you graduated from school and from college, you literally went through a Saturnalia type mm -hmm. Occultic ritual. You wore a black robe. You wore a fucking two dimensional cube on your head. Yeah. The mortar board used, yep. you know, to lay bricks. Yeah. And then you did the, like, the motion with the you tassel. Move the thing, yeah. All and that then you shit throw has it in the air, right? You throw it in the air and it's on its side spinning like Saturn. <laughs> and then they go, I don't get it. <laughs> it's I, I guess, man. That, and that's the funny part, really. I mean, if you think about it, like if you're part of the cabal or whatever, that's the funny part. Right. That's where you laugh about it. And like I was saying earlier, how like the Muslims is the youngest, the, the Islamic faith, faith is the youngest of all of the, the big three, right? The big three, they're the youngest ones. And if you go back, uh, there's rumors that the Catholic Church actually fucking really helped push Muhammad and create Islam and create the following hmm. almost to smash the Jews is what it seemed like. But the Muslims got out of control and then the Jews somehow, <laughs> I don't know if it was the Jews that did it, but somehow the Muslims literally to be considered a Muslim, you have to fucking trek all the way to Mecca and then partake in a Saturn ritual and run around the black cube. It's like they've got to be standing on a hill laughing. Right. Right. Every time they've got to be like, look at them. They're doing, they're doing I remember, exactly. Dude, oh. it was only a couple of years ago that I learned about the Kaaba. I was like, wait a minute. Dude. They have what? Wait, yeah. hold up, hold up. Why, 
Wait, they go they go to Mecca it. and they do what? Around what? I was like, why why wasn't I ever taught this before? Yep. Yeah. It's even got a hold on yep. it. You know, you're supposed to stick your hand. That's the vagina hole. You know, and then yes, they run in a circle. Is it counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. Yeah. They run in a circle and from the air, Saturn. Yep. That's what you're looking at. That's it's <laughs> It's fucking crazy, dude. I know. It's, it's nuts, dude. It's, it's absolutely nuts. And you go into the etymologies, and then when you start learning, like, language and etymology and symbolism, I mean, just the word symbol, you know, because it all comes back to, like, horns, you know, and fertility. It all comes back to yeah. fucking. And the bull was the fertile. The bull was the the one who the brute who could fuck and and also like Taurus I mean that's when you bring out the plows and stuff that was really like mm -hmm. the beginning of the year and shit like the bull is really the the horns the bull dick and it all goes back well these are yeah they're all that. ancient fertility cults based on the the various aspects of the zodiac right yeah it's just like some yep. of the other ones like you know, from Sagittarius and Virgo. And when those signs were in their ages, they're so fucking old that they're just gone. They've been erased. Yeah. That's why we only have the stuff from, uh, you know, uh, Taurus and Pisces and all that shit. Yeah. And just how it's used in like your everyday language uh, is just mind blowing, you know, like, and people think I'm crazy when I say stuff like, like L, you know, being the God by L uh, being the God of gods, you know, mm -hmm. and like just in Spanish, you know, L is used all the time. It mm -hmm. means the, but it is a word that is used all the, all the time. And then you look at like, uh, how now LOL is right. like a thing that we, we were constantly putting in the phone and stuff. It's just these little things that just this continuation and the word bowl you know be it from the word bible the parables the book of parables mm -hmm. and parables by meaning to to cut to you know by bowls it's all bullshit yeah <laughs> i mean in the word symbol you know uh the words like uh, actors right the word tor taurus toro um, is right in there. That's why you have the Shroud of Turin. You know, mm -hmm. if you look at the Shroud of Turin, it's in the city of the bull, right? And it's got the crown of, they say thorns, but it's horns. Uh, they say the Moses had horns. Uh, there is a lost translation there. I, I think maybe, I mean, it says the face of Moses shown and shown in Hebrew is Kron, and Kron means uh, rays, like mm -hmm. rays of light or horns. Like, so it's, uh, it's a toss up on that one, <laughs> but he probably did have horns because that's the thing. They love the horns and the wiener and, uh, stuff. I yeah. mean, look at their capital or capital is the, the, it's, you tell people it's a temple. That's why it's O L and not, uh, E L when you spell out capital, right? Uh, because the O L represents the temple part. And people go, you're fucking crazy. And then you go, well, look at the fucking uh, Lincoln Memorial. It says this fucking temple right there. Right. It says temple right there. And then from the air, it's a big penis. Mm -hmm. It's a big dick pointing at Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> right? <laughs> and his back is towards the main temple of the fucking Temple of Solomon. Like, it's like, it's so fucking crazy. It is, but I I love it not because it's evil and gonna kill us. It's just very interesting <laughs> and the history and the etymologies and stuff. And like when I try to get people into it, and they're like, blah, 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 blah. "I'm not into it." And it's like, yeah, I wasn't into history either when I was a kid, but now it's like, holy shit, this is interesting as shit. Well, I like, think I think each person has to kind of come to that place where yeah. they decide that they have to learn. Right. Yep. They have to understand these things that are that are confusing them. Right. Yep. Or a TikTok comes up and they're like, oh, shit. Yeah, uh, did you know this? <laughs> that seems to be the thing now is uh, 
those goddamn TikToks. A TikTok will come up saying the same thing you've been saying for 20 fucking years. <laughs> and it's somebody they don't know. And they're like, oh, my God, did you know? Tell me all about it. No way. <laughs> Are you serious? What? Where'd you hear that? Not from me. Uh, okay, well, the fuck away. <laughs> well, Chris, we've been going for almost three hours. Can you believe yeah. that? I can. I blab a lot. <laughs> no, it's been fantastic, man. It's been great content. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Before we, uh, before we get out of here, let people know where they can connect with you and your work. Uh, you can find everything rained out, rained out rantcast.com. That's just how it sounds. Rained out rantcast.com. That's where all the links are. Usually the new episode will be streaming there. On Sun, well, it's streaming there throughout the week, but live it'll be on there on Sundays and then Rumble. But all my links are raindoutrancast.com. And then uh, every, for now, every day, uh, Monday through Thursday on AM Wake up there with Steve. It's uh, my time is nine to 12, his time seven to whatever that is. Seven to 10, I think. Yeah, seven to 10. Is our, yeah, I'm Central Time. But yeah, if you haven't checked that show out, check that show out. Uh, definitely, man. Over there. I, I'm not lying when I say it's the best day mo- morning show around. And that's just because there's not a lot of morning shows around. Like, <laughs> it is literally the best one. Yeah. And, it's, uh, yeah. and you and uh, Steve, like, y- you play off of each other really, really well. Like, there's a, there's a real, uh, 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 a very obvious chemistry between the two of you, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that is good. I, you know, I've been on other shows with people and stuff and I've, I've, I, at my show, I brought in different, trying different co-hosts and stuff. And yeah, Steve, it works out cause we're kind of the same person. It seems we have this chemistry and, uh, sometimes we can almost finish each other's sentences and uh like there's no attempt to be funny it's just we're just doing our thing you know you, you the, i always run into that with people with co-hosting people that just try too hard you know mm. and it just doesn't work and I mean we just do our thing it's, it's it you know there's no trying about anything we tell you what's up and it just happens to be funny <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah. we got to laugh. We got to keep yeah. laughing, too. Uh, <laughs> and especially too, uh... in the face of the fuckers that are trying to pull this shit off. Those are the people that we need to be laughing at the most. But just for our own sanity, thank you for what uh, you and Steve do to to help keep our spirits up. Yeah. Uh, well, try to do the best. You know, I'm hoping it lasts. For a while, this is just kind of like, this is Steve. It's Steve's show 100%. You know, I'm just kind of there. Uh, I just kind of fell into it. And uh, I don't know how long it's going to last because at some point my shoulder is going to get be fixed and uh, it doesn't pay the bills. (laughs) Oh, trust me. I know. (laughs) I've been doing it for over two years now. I, I know it doesn't pay the bills. Yeah. Uh, there's going to come a time where it's going to, it, it's, I'm not going to be on that show anymore. So enjoy it while you can, you know, and I enjoy it and I'm glad people enjoy it. I'm surprised there isn't more messages of like, holy shit. That's I like, I can't believe you even fucking went there. <laughs> I know. I know. I don't get those messages either. So yeah, it must be, uh, yeah. you must be doing good work. That's what I would figure. Yeah. I hope, I mean, I've gotten a couple messages sometimes when I'm off uh, on some things, and I I come back on the next day and I try to correct it the be, you know the best I can. I fucking hate having egg on my face, but uh, it happens. You know, yeah. it happens to all of us. But dude, it has been an absolute pleasure uh, having you on yeah, tonight. Man. I honestly, I I didn't even expect that that you would be able to go three hours, but I guess you're used to it. You know. I am used to it, and I had quite a nap. I ate some uh, CBN edibles earlier. I had a, quite a nap earlier. Nice. <laughs> I 
That's ready. Well, it's a good way to yeah, uh, end a Friday. We'll have to get oh, together and do this again sometime. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Have you back on the AM wake up. Oh, yeah. I'm always around. Just let me know when you need uh, somebody to fill in or something. Oh, yeah. All right, man. Uh, I guess uh, peace. All right, man. <laughs> Take care. Enjoy the rest of your evening. You too. Later, guys. Later, man. Ooh, look at that.